the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. <laughs> Tonight, Lord, we declare that you are the King of Peace, the Prince of Peace. You have come to bless us tonight. Let your word bless us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy and pleasures at his right hand forevermore. Tonight I'll be teaching on something that I believe will change your life. Hallelujah. I know that every message that comes here is very powerful. But tonight, I want to share with you something very personal and I believe it will bless you. Hallelujah. I, when God told me about this message, I didn't know what to call it. And then I had a dream this morning and I saw the title, Commanding Results. I didn't write it, I saw it. I want to share with you something powerful tonight, if you will believe. Make champions out of this message, my father. You see, many of you, when you hear the word like this, you just think it's a caption to motivate you. No, no. To the extent that I lacked what message encapsulated, what title. And I said, Lord, you have to help me. And while I slept in the night, I just saw it. Call it commanding results. Hallelujah. What makes certain people to move in levels of results? Levels of power, the manifestations of the word of God. What makes certain ministries prosper and increase? What makes certain individuals look like angels and gods upon the earth? Hallelujah. What makes others very blessed and prosperous? What makes others influential and command such degree of power and grace from the throne? Commanding results. Never forget this message for the rest of your life. Please, final year students, open up your ears, your heart, your spirit, your life and receive this message tonight. Oh, 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 oh. Faithful, you are faithful, 
You are faithful. You are faithful. Your word is faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are mighty. You are all this, Lord. Your word is true. I believe. And Lord, we believe. We have seen with our eyes the manifestations of your word. The ancient have told us that this was the secret of the power that commanded authority in their time tonight lord as we explore this ancient book i pray that the potency of your power will be made manifest in our lives lord i pray that we will not disregard this revelation tonight i pray that we will believe it we will respect it we will obey it and Lord we are sure that you will perform hallelujah hallelujah Matthew 21 Matthew 21 Say in the name of Jesus, the word of God is making me a sign and a wonder. Like the ancients of old, the generals of old, the mighty men of old, I am making history by the power of the word. I believe it. I respect it. In Jesus' name. Matthew 21. I start reading from verse 18. Matthew 21. If you're there, say amen. amen. Now, in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Say he was hungry. So, the first thing we see in this chapter is that there is hunger. Hallelujah. And when he saw a fig tree along the way, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. Say after me, but leaves. Hmm. Only. And said to it, let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. The Bible says Jesus was walking and then he saw a tree because he was hungry hallelujah so every hungry man is satisfied when he eats of the fruit of a tree are you listening to me and the bible says that jesus saw a tree from afar it looked wonderful green and jesus came to it and found out that it had only leaves and no fruit hallelujah only leaves and no fruit and he was angry it didn't look like he loved that tree because he cursed the tree out of anger he said let no fruit come out of you again why do you keep deceiving people as though you are a tree that is blossoming and you make hungry people come to you only to find out that there are only leaves and no fruit hallelujah okay thank you i am sure that jesus was not the only one who had been deceived by that tree that tree had a track record of deceiving many people by looking so green hallelujah and every hungry person that was passing would see that tree and believe that that tree would satisfy its hunger and the bible says when jesus came close he thought the leaves were in the fruit was inside and he pushed the evergreen leaves no fruit what kind of tragedy is this that a tree can grow to a full size? Have, I mean, uh, leaves all over and then there is no fruit. 
and Jesus cursed it in anger. Hallelujah. That tree reminds me of many lives and many believers. We look anointed. We talk anointed. We act anointed. Hallelujah. Reminds me of many ministries. Reminds me of many men of God. Many pastors and apostles and prophets. Hallelujah. Reminds me of all kinds of people. Many leaders. They look like they are green. They look attractive. Hallelujah. And then you come near only to find out that there is no fruit that can satisfy the hunger of people. You will be blessed tonight, oh. You will be blessed tonight. That's a contrast because you see, Jesus never said he is glorified when you have leaves. John 15 verse 8, he says, Herein is the Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. This is what brings glory to the Father. Not that you become green. Hallelujah. Not that you just become green and blossom, but you bear fruit. Hallelujah. Because when the hungry come, they are looking. The Bible says Jesus was hungry. If you were not hungry, nothing will make him to look for a tree. Because he was passing and he was hungry. And then he saw a tree that attracted him by the leaves. And he came to the tree only to be surprised that there was no fruit. Say, I will bear fruit. Much fruit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so why are certain lives like this? You find out that there is no fruit whatsoever. Listen to me. If you have been serving the Lord for years and years and there is nothing in your life as a sign of a fruit, something is wrong. The end of faith is a performance and a manifestation. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed. He said, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work, he is able to perform it to the end. So, the life of a Christian, eventually in your journey, some fruit should begin to manifest that can attest to the fact that you are planted. Psalms 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. How are we sure he meditates day and night? Because eventually he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. Other trees receive their nourishment from the rain, but this guy receives his own from under. He is planted. By the rivers. As a result. He yields his fruits. In season. And whose leaf does not wither. But the Bible tells us that we see someone. Mimicking that blessed man. With only leaves. And no fruit. Hallelujah. The Bible says he shall be. Compared to a tree. That is planted. How will men who are afar, because they may not see the river that he's planted close to. So how will they see? He will yield his fruit in season. Yes, we agree that, okay, it takes a while for a believer to crystallize the word of God and believe it and absorb it. But eventually, there should be a sign. The Bible says, and Elijah prayed, and he told his servant, go and check. He went, he said, there is no sign. And he prayed, at the seventh time, there was a sign. There will always be a sign that lets us know whether you are growing, whether you are commanding power and authority. If it is the real tongues you have been praying for years, something in your life, there should be a signature upon your life that there is progress are you listening to me if the bible says the word of god is able to make you wise and you have truly been meditating on that word eventually we should see the fruits of divine wisdom are you listening to me the bible promises us certain things as believers when we walk in the lord if you have been walking and living by the word truly a time must come 
when men can testify and say there is an evidence say after me evidence there must be an evidence Noah told men that God told him that rain was coming true or false it took a long time but eventually the Bible says that God vindicated him Abraham was a man who trusted God and even when he was 75 years hallelujah a promise was made to him and he waited 25 years for that promise but eventually the end of faith is a performance if you, if you have put your trust and your faith in the word of God eventually there must be a performance every area of your life cannot be a barren land forever are you listening to me if one area of your life is receiving results it's a sign that the other area will come so God will encourage you if academically you are not doing well spiritually you are not doing well health wise you are not doing well suddenly when you begin to find out that the anointing of the spirit is at work in you what does it tell you it means fruit is already being produced is that correct and it will motivate you to begin to trust his word in other areas but where every of your life is a dead a barren wilderness something is wrong are you listening to me there are many churches and many people that have given excuses forever they pray more than anybody else they fast more than anybody else hallelujah there are all kinds of devotionals circulating in town but i want to ask you a question tonight how long do you want to watch the leaves on your tree when will that leaf begin to translate into fruit that the hungry can come and begin to eat because you see it is deceit jesus saw a tree and was attracted and when he came to the tree he just found leaves and there was no fruit and he was angry and he cursed the tree he said may fruit never come out of you again hallelujah two secrets tonight number one you want to command results in your life number one you must have absolute faith in God absolute faith in God demonstrated by total obedience absolute faith don't just write faith in God absolute faith in God absolute faith in the word of God demonstrated by total obedience unwavering obedience hmm. absolute faith that you believe that God is faithful and that God is able the thousands of promises that are scattered in this Bible God cannot be joking with you hallelujah absolute faith listen we have ended up complicating Christianity but do you know I, I noticed that most of the people that shook their generation most of them were not even educated people they took the Bible. Smith Wigglesworth, he was a cobbler. His wife was even the woman of God. And he just found in his Bible, John 14 verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou, let's read it. John 14. Absolute faith. I found out that what most believers have is hope not faith many believers hope in God they don't have faith in God they just hope that one day in the sweet by and by verse 12 John 14 verse 12 verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me who is speaking here this is Jesus Christ the works that I do he shall also do and greater works say greater works 
and greater works shall he do this is jesus christ talking here not an angel if he sent a prophet would have said oh the prophet didn't hear well are you listening to me jesus himself said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes and smith wigglesworth found this and said lord are you serious about this that an uneducated person like me if i can believe if i can believe and god said yes Catherine Kuman found this. Amphi McPherson found this. Generals of old found this. Verily, verily. He that believes, not he that is born again, not he that is praying in tongues, he that believes, absolute trust. The works that I do, the works that I do, he shall also do. He said, and greater works. Greater works. Many people have tried to give every kind of carnal interpretation. Brother, greater means greater. You went to school. Greater means greater. Greater works. That means if you are not seeing greater works, what is the diagnosis? You do not believe. Now, let me tell you something. When it comes to spiritual growth, you have to apply a lot of humility because the word of God has a way of flogging you and embarrassing you. When I was studying this scripture, I said, Lord, does that mean I don't believe in you? God says, simple, to the degree to which you are seeing my works. And I knew I had to accept it. Because brothers and sisters, I have seen a mystery in our world that is not everything that is impossible for everybody. There are some people, some things are possible for. Are you listening to me? There are some people standing and praying. Oh Lord, bring a boat. And then we see others get on that water and begin to move. The fact that there is one person doing what you are not doing, it kills the excuse that is God that is responsible. Are you listening to me? He that believes in me. The works. I remember one of the first times I read this scripture. I was studying Pastor Chris's message. And Kenyon on faith. We were going to prepare for crusade. Never had that experience. We didn't know what to expect. But we took this word and said Lord this is true. How many of you truly believe in God? How many of you believe in God? Let me tell you something. Ejimi did something that touched me. I remember during his mother's um, burial. He just came out and laughed. And said. Those who didn't even affect them. They just sat down and were looking. And he said God loaned them the mother for a number of years. And he was so happy. And they kept saying, God is faithful and I move forward. There are, listen, there are many of you who have been sitting, grumbling, shouting at God, saying, God, you are not true. Do you know you are one over how many people who are saying God is faithful? If you say God is not faithful, there are angels whose voices are louder than your own. They, it will overshadow your own belief in an instant. One word, holy. Are you listening to me? Do you believe God's word? Many of you have been reading your Bible. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There are many pastors. There are many ministries who only open the Bible because they are looking for messages to preach to people. They don't believe. It's easy to stand and wear suit and make noise on Sunday or on Wednesday or on Friday or whatever the meeting days are. There are many leaders who truly do not believe the word of God. Tonight I'm asking you, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe that Jesus Christ and all the promises that he has put in the word for you, can you take it with childlike simplicity and say, Lord, I believe. Do you believe Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that says the thoughts I think towards you 
there are many of you from the time you got to final year your fear is a direct sign that you don't believe God whatever I fear in my life the faith and the revelation of God's word has not entered there because perfect love cast out fear so if you are afraid of the future let me assure you that the revelation of God's word that secures your future has not entered you yet are you listening to me absolute trust father Abraham and the generals of old these guys believed God and there was a performance and we began to see the fruit and the manifestation of that faith you came to ABU and you believed God that you'll be a success. Then your first result, 1.5, seven carryovers. Hey, hey, God, you said this, boy. You just said, Lord, I believe you. You just said, Lord, I believe you. You just said, no matter what, Lord, your word is true. And I know that this is not over. Hallelujah. Your uncle promised you. That is going to be blessing you. Suddenly your uncle said, I've changed my mind. He said, ah, but uncle, he said, the only constant thing in life is change. I have changed my mind. And suddenly fear grips you. I tell you, friends, fear is an indication that the word of God has not crystallized in that area in your life. For when the word of God truly comes, it drives out fear. Say, I refuse to fear. There are so many believers living in the word. We confess God's word. We believe God's word in quote. But then, the sign that we have not believed is we are still afraid. And then there is no performance in our lives. Those who command results. There are many of you that believe you are carrying the healing anointing. You have not prayed for one sick body because you are afraid of embarrassment. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a passion to get you to a point where you believe the word of God because the Bible says if thou canst believe all things are possible I challenge myself every time I say Lord why am I seeing that I, I, I was doing a Bible study with someone yesterday the day before okay yesterday I think Sandra yes we're having Bible study and we were talking about the life, the ministry of Jesus Christ. And tears filled my eyes while I was talking. Because I couldn't deny the fact that my life was far from the Jesus life that I saw. This guy was a man of faith. Nothing moved him. He believed the Father. He believed the Word. He had such audacity. He commanded results. Believe us, what is wrong with us? Hallelujah. I tell you the truth. It's easy to feel like you are trying and I understand you are doing your best. But it does not negate the fact that this revelation has not yet entered us. Because when the word enters you, I tell you there is a performance. I will die believing this thing I'm sharing with you. How much of God do you believe? Many of us have our spiritual life. Then we have our normal life. The one that works with wisdom. Let's be wise. Let's reason now. Don't be stupid. So you, we make bold claims. But when we step out there. There are all kinds of fears. And we begin to patch the word of God. And, and manifest auxiliary faith. The Lord is asking you a question tonight. Do you have absolute faith in him? Hallelujah. I don't know if I can answer and say, Lord, I have absolute faith in you. Maybe I can say I have faith. But it may not be absolute. Because I know what absolute faith has done in my Bible. I've read my Bible very well. And men who had absolute faith. They rose beyond limitations and shook their generation. They had no internet. Are you listening to me? No people that produce posters. 
Look at the life of Jesus for instance. The Bible says in the book of Mark that Jesus was in a room and he said the whole city came and gathered in front of the room. What, what kind of result will a man command like this? There are all kinds of excuses we keep giving ourselves. Read the Bible. The, see, the secret of ENI is found in Mark 1, 2, 3. Go and read it. The Bible says Jesus went to Capernaum. There, multitudes heard about him and they came. Jesus went to the desert. The same multitudes came. Jesus went by the seaside. The same multitudes came. Jesus climbed the mountain. The same multitudes came. Same result. Same power. He casted out devils. He healed the sick. He preached the word. He taught the word. The performance. Look at me. All of you look up. If you were to suddenly see the vision of Jesus Christ, the real Jesus, and he stood here, and Jesus suddenly made an announcement and said, I am giving you 10 minutes. The first 10 people who come to me, whatever their needs are, it will be met. How many of you will check your Wivon before coming? Why are you not doing that to me? Simple. I, you, you do not yet trust that my level of competence has gotten to that place. Are you listening to me? If you are hungry for God, you have to get the truth and press to it. I assure you, listen to me, brothers and sisters. If Jesus Christ walked here right now, before you finish, the ministers will gap you because they will fly on his leg and say, Jesus, you don't know how I've waited. I already have my list. I'm not about to write. And you just drop it. Every time people heard about Jesus, they started laughing. You know why? They knew the result had come. They just started laughing. Their own issue was to get to see him. But your issue is not to see me. Your issue is, at, is to ascertain. Lord, now that I've seen Joshua, help him. Let there be grace that is available this night. To at least be able to meet some of my needs. I tell you, you don't know how it pains me when people come up here and say, I wrote seven prayer points in a miracle service. Two have been answered. In my mind, I say, okay. Seven minus two is what? Help me. Seven minus two is what? If you drop your prayer point directly to the person Christ, how many will be met? Tell me, how many will be met? This is the kind of hunger and honesty that will drive you to the anointing. I refuse to give excuses. It simply means there is a light that I've not seen. There is a depth of anointing I've not stepped into. There is a dimension of the operation of the spirit that I've not gotten to yet. That's why whether you say Apostle Josh, Bishop Josh, I won't be misled with all of those nonsense. There is work to be done. Are you listening to me? Mm. Those of you who are already confident, I'm laying hands on three people. I'm laying hands on five people. You stopped reading your Bible, that's why. Pick up your Bible and read it again and be ashamed of your pride. And find out that there is work to be done. I tell you, if ministers knew this, the Bible would be the best tool that they will have. I refuse to give excuses. Are you listening to me? That my life will make such a mark. See, we have dwelt in this unbelief to a point that when anybody is exceptional, people say, this guy is not real. Oh, be careful. This Joshua Selman guy is not real. I'm warning you now. Tomorrow, don't say it's any kind of thing. Because people are so complacent. The average pastor, there are three things that many men of God are looking for and they'll be satisfied in ministry. One, to have a crowd. Two, to at least be able to say something from this Bible. It doesn't matter what it is. Number three, and then let there be at least just one person who will fall. They say, you think I'm playing? Oh, what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Is that what you think will shake the world? 
that's not uncommon enough we are talking about commanding authority over territories one miracle that let me tell you something in the days of the generals all newspapers was about the generals and the fearful miracles they did right now when last the man must pay for advert if you see advert in the newspaper he paid for it to say okay my program is around please just check are you listening to me there are some people in Zaria that have never even heard that there is anything called koinonia what are we boasting for hmm. look at Elijah he stands somewhere the whole city the whole city didn't hear him he just said there shall not be rain the whiplash of drought started making people find out who is responsible for this i say one guy elijah one man like this and the gist started spreading elijah who is he they said go and look for him now and the king says because the king's ego is, is spoiled he's embarrassed he says go and catch that man 50 people march and stand and elijah is taking fresh air on the mountain and they interrupt his fellowship this was a man like you are you listening to me old covenant for you new creation old covenant elijah looks and says if i be a man of god let fire come down right now we have different ways of speaking when you stand you say if i be standing in the authority and moving in the office the department and the office of the christ let it come fire doesn't come you're not getting it we are just teaching congregations english and vocabulary we are just having a brilliant and an educated but powerless church well right now there's improvement everybody is falling everywhere everybody is falling everywhere just watch tv a man of signs and wonders before they say anything people just fall and that's all you have to show the world something is wrong that's all you have to show the world that a man just fell down and then they, or now prophecy itself is even him come you are, you are gladys you are from the east your mother is sick your uncle traveled you are an ABU student and then the congregation claps what, what how look real prophets this is what they say there is coming a problem in Zaria, but I stop it. That's a real mandate that you stand and tell the people what Satan wants to do and you stop it. The creative power of the spoken word. We just have a group of revelatory people even the native doctors can create they have helped to give you the one to reveal when are we going to get angry that we are going to begin to command territorial results listen if two dead people how many if two dead people rise in koinonia i assure you if you come by 2 30 next friday you will stand outside critics look at the bible the Bible says people came and filled where Jesus was sitting. Mark chapter 2. And the Bible says others were standing outside. When Jesus saw the fate of the man that they brought, the Bible says the scribes who came early and were seated in front. They said, why are you forgiving his sins? If they came late, they would have been outside. Even then, they rushed and came early for that meeting. Jesus had no nonsense. He climbed the mountain. Brothers and sisters, human beings like you stayed with a man for three days on the mountain. The closest thing to what we are supposed to do is what government officials and politicians are doing. Go to the house of politicians. You will see a man who has five or six children sitting outside. You say, why is he? I'm waiting for his excellency. That's the, it's called hunger. The man has fruit. Where he got it is irrelevant. He shall has fruit. When believers come to church and after one hour, it's not true. 
I tell you the truth is a sign of lack of true fire. In the days of Amphie McPherson, listen, she had a program called Stretcher Only. Meaning if you are not sick, you are not invited for that meeting. What is our, the, name the kind of conferences we have right now. Business special. For only the ones that are successful. Only you are not successful, you are not a businessman, walk outside. The people are already successful, pastor, don't lie. It's not your anointing that is making them successful. These guys suffered in the bowels of time and got their money and then you stand and say, receive, they have it already. Somebody is budgeting to buy a car of 5 million. He has gotten 4.8, you are speaking. Speaking what? Takes two months salary to complete it and buy his car. If I can speak to you and tomorrow they give you a car, I'm a real prophet. Don't go and meet somebody that's already tried. If I meet Pastor Williams, I say, hey, Jim, tomorrow, of course. Common sense tells me he's... Ah. Am I challenging you? I know you don't like the message. Sorry you came. You must hear it this night. Koinonia. Where hunger is put in you again. See, a man called St. Patrick. Let me tell you something about St. Patrick. Hallelujah. St. Patrick was such a powerful man. He was a dangerous man. A snake beat in Ireland. A snake beat a, a woman's daughter. And she was crying. And St. Patrick was just meandering around the street. And he saw her. He said, Madam, why are you crying? She said, a snake beat her. He said, a snake beat you. Where? Where did the snake go to? Hallelujah. And they showed him the forest. He entered and sat for the snake. He held it. He said, you and your kind, I banish you from this land. Till today, there's no snake in Ireland. Dearly beloved, Hallelujah. I hope the king got to hear this about St. Patrick. Do not keep the he said, who is that yourself. man? Share to that guy as many as you we can don't even know to what help to them bless you. Check and the king said, what sign will you show me? Messages. The king's Subscribe son died six channel. months. Comment he said, go and call St. Patrick. Life six life. months. They had put him in the grave. When St. Patrick came, true life ah. story. St. Patrick he signed his signature. Pray. St. Patrick. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de bashka na kata branda kete katos. Kete branda kata pakotos koto prekete kene kata. It was St. Patrick that began what you did. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. Christ above me. Today we say a man of faith and power and he comes with his big stomach. No revelation. Close heavens. Every kind of thing. He says, well, I was in my hotel room. Or God performed. And we waste people's time Telling them the price of suits that we are buying. I'm challenging you tonight. Commanding results. Do you believe in the Lord? There was a monk. They were trying to build their church. A Catholic monk. And I think they made a mistake in the measurement. And then they came and the wood was short. The guy just held the wood and started moving. That's how he drew it and completed it. I tell you the truth. Anthony McPherson will organize programs. The only people invited are those on stretchers. That's a real miracle service, not what we are doing. Charles and Francis Hunter, they work close to some of these dimensions. In a single meeting, they raise 100 wheelchairs. Brothers and sisters, replace all the seats that are in this place. Just imagine in your mind there are wheelchairs and just move them here. Imagine if everybody here were crippled. This is the kind of service. There are many men of God, if you invite them in a service and they see three people on wheelchair, they just do as if they didn't see. I know my God will heal. They are laying hands and will just jump the person. And then you say, what manner of man is Jesus? He made the lame to walk. I wonder what the lame person is singing. And the shadows of Peter 
men lined up in the streets because they said Peter is coming Peter is coming and I can imagine a woman please come from bed and Peter says bless you bless you suddenly you are hearing shouts hallelujah thank you Jesus if we have half of that anointing I will put this thing will be a basket a bowl and then you put it you write my name Joshua and then my picture will be here you come and touch it lick it put it in your wallet put it in your purse bath with the pour water on it and go and bath madness all those things because we do not understand women shook their generations right now there are men of God who are on TV but nobody knows them they air three times a week as they are saying now we thank you for this broadcast you cannot even remember who preached again the only thing you remember is gloss suit as if they printed it in a, in a printing press noise leaves with no fruit hallelujah am I challenging you because we need to rise friends this is an apostolic generation you cannot be satisfied with what we are seeing what we are doing now is joke I tell you it's not ministry yet Archbishop Benson Idahosa he was driving okay they were driving him an armed robber stopped them back back stop the driver was afraid Idahosa just opened his mouth he told the person to open the door for him first he came out the armed robber lie down lie down he just looked at them he said one of three things must happen to you this night either you will be paralyzed you will be blind or you will die but one must happen this night Will Am Brothers ever? Spokane was called the cleanest city during the time of John G. Lake. You know the way they admit people in Shika? That's how you come to his hospital. You collect a form. To prove that you had the healing anointing, you go and bring seven people that you healed. That's how he admits. If you say you are sensing the call of God upon your life, you say go and bring seven people with what used to happen to them and what you have done. Then he will consider whether you are qualified to be his staff. Can you imagine? That was a yastic. Now everybody, a man with a strong healing anointing. I came all the way, 50 kilometers to tell you. Your... While they are talking, the demons are saying, now wow. Saying, before, when men were around, there was fire. You know these demons have been around since. They knew the fire upon these men. And they ask one another, they say, ah, when these guys died, they didn't transfer anything. And all of those men, they were called brother this, brother that. Now you call Joshua Selma an apostle. You know, I fear that name because I just remember Apostle Paul, Apostle Smith Wigglesworth, Apostle John G. Lake, Apostle St. Patrick, Apostle Josh, for where? For where? You won't deceive me. No way. But many of you are already parading sons and daughters. You say, call me pastor this. Go and sit down. And sit down in one place and gather yourself together and first ask what God has called you to do say in the name of Jesus I believe and yet the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 it says so that day without us that means our generation is still coming the Bible says this do you know before Smith Wigglesworth died I'll share with you some stories today before Smith Wigglesworth died when he was laying hands on Lester Sumro, he told him something. He said, look, make sure you don't die with your anointing. He said, look for young men that are serious and transfer this anointing to them. And then he laid hands on him and began to prophesy. 
he said i see a generation a generation that what we have done will look like a step out of the cave compared to what they are doing apostle babalola cac you see there are many denominations today that don't do not even believe what their founders live for apostle babalola he was said listen he was said that that guy was so powerful a time came when he was preaching and he started lifting literally see the water that the concept of holy water came from him he was thirsty praying on a mountain and there was no water and he struck the rock and said let water come men they are the type you say men to not 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 the, the, the people who are saying men we are, we are called you call us children am i challenging you do you know apostle babalola was moving there was a council now this one i attended a pastor's conference by apostle atb williams in kafanchan emmanuel kure's conference and he, and he was saying this he said that apostle babalola when they wanted to call him when people said there's a gentleman that had the fire of god there were certain elders like seven or eight of them they said they don't believe he's called look at the miracles that this man was doing they said they are not yet convinced that he has the anointing in other words this guy is still a joker he's playing ministry all of them prayed and a few said actually they have received confirmation the elders refused they say until god speaks to every one of them one by one before they were agreed one day they were praying together and there was a madman running and disturbing people in the street and apostle babalola just came out from the forest he was just moving in the city not going for a program no protocol no mic he was just meandering around the street and that guy came out and people were running yard matches and was driving people and then the elders were watching the lord told them to watch and they were watching through the window and apostle Baba, when the madman came close to him he said but you are not mad now he collected his match he said sit down here please that was how those men confirmed that god really called this guy now how do we confirm that god has called a man once you just see a guy that is handsome he looks like Eliab you just say surely surely and see you see ministers and the body of Christ there is no pressure whatsoever on us to press for more you look at a man of God and see that he's absolutely satisfied you even hear some men of God say I'm so fulfilled and he's showing you his watch I'm so fulfilled there are sick people coming there are oppressed people coming and jesus caused that victory he said because you have deceived me you made me to come all the way you made me to do everything i'm doing and you have been deceiving many like that let me tell you there are many people that god himself would dethrone out of ministry and out of certain places of honor because if we keep deceiving god's people and claiming come for miracle service are the people really receiving miracles or do we just celebrate one miracle a fractured hand got healed when i was watching what the media people played i tell you i i was happy but i was angry at the same time or a robot healed people to a point that he was tired they just prayed on a mountain and told people to come and touch it that's the real me now people drink one gallon of water and nothing happens he said drink it prophetic water you drink it you 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 they say take come and buy a special i saw a man of god praying for one woman the anointing oil is like this 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 uh, uh so, so, uh, this pure tag bottle he poured some on her head told her to pour some Hi. what men of god do to people and ask her to drink everything that's how she drank in my presence it was on, on tv drank everything the man said yes if you drink oil like that you will be sick you will be very sick we spend over 30 minutes trying to minister to one person look at jesus i will be made clean come on he saw the demons go and they left 
what is wrong am i is the only me that is having this anger many of you are saying i won't be a man of god please turn and face these people say i believe the word of god the second key your faith can be seen friends the second key I'll share this quickly and we'll pray. This is one of the reasons why many people do not gain the anointing to command results. I call it the law of honor. Write it quickly. One day the Lord showed me a scripture. Turn with me to Hebrews 7 verse 1. If you have been sleeping, wake up because your life is about to change. Hebrews So open your eyes Open your ears And then you'll understand That the Lord is here Open your eyes Open your ears then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Let me show you. This is one of the biggest secrets of my life. I want to share with you something that will change your life tonight. I tell you, if you believe this, if you believe this, you will be changed forever. Behold, I show you a mystery. Lord, open our eyes. Respect what you are about to hear verse 1 for this Melchizedek king of Salem priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and what blessed him number 2 to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of Salem which is king of peace 3 without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abided a priest continually. Verse 6. But he whose descent is not counted from them, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him of all the promises. Verse 7. Read with me together. One to go. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Read it one more time. And without all contradiction... The less is blessed. Stand up. Please stand up. Just stand up. Pray a prayer in one minute. And say, Lord, my life is about to change as I hear this revelation. I humble myself. Let your word come as light. Please pray this prayer just one minute. Because God is about to change lives right now. God is about to shift levels. Please pray. Oh yes, doors will open forever for certain people. Lord, I pray. I pray this revelation has changed my life it has changed the lives of many I pray that men will be commanders of results hallelujah God bless you please sit down look at this listen to me let me give you certain revelations number one you must realize that in the kingdom of God, listen, listen to me. The anointing is carried in the kingdom of God through human vessels. Are you listening to me? Human vessels are the carriers of God's power, of God's unction, of God's ability. And the Bible says without contradiction. In other words, this one, you can't argue on it. You can't preach another message about it. He said the lesser is blessed of the greater. Abraham is the father of what many people call the Abrahamic covenant. The Bible makes us to understand that the king came, I mean that Abraham came from the slaughter of certain people and he spoiled them. The Bible says he came and he took a tenth of the offering. And he blessed one man called Melchizedek. 
hallelujah and the bible says melchizedek looked at abraham and blessed abraham and said blessed be abraham possessor of the most high and paul is giving us a revelation here using the life of melchizedek and abraham and he told him he said without contradiction in the realm of the spirit it is only the lesser are you listening to me it's only one who is higher who has the capacity pastor please come who has the capacity to take you and to lift you into his higher place of anointing follow me in the realm of the spirit listen to me only one who is higher than you has the capacity to draw you and the limit to which he can draw you is the limit of his anointing no man can draw you above his anointing are you listening to me that's why when god wanted to swear he looked for one who was higher than him so he could submit to him and say please help me swear to these people when he did not find anybody he said to since i'm the only one i swear by myself are you listening to me powerful principle listen listen i want to give you the unbeatable secret the unbeatable secret of the anointing growing in the anointing and financial prosperity when you want to rise you don't sow to people lower than you they can't lift you when you get to your wealthy place this is called charity are you listening to me you sow upwards and then you are called higher Are you following me now without contradiction it is only the lesser that receives from the greater hallelujah i want to show you the principle of walking in the anointing i never allow any man who is higher or greater than me do anything in my presence that i can do for many of you you have been misled and deceived that you only give that honor to your pastor or your spiritual father and many of you have passed anointings that can set you free but because of the stereotype of ministry it has to be me my pastor my father my this and that listen to me and without contradiction the lesser is empowered and lifted to the realm of the greater When I saw this scripture, I repented from talking about men of God and people. I want to show you why the doors are shut for many people and many ministries and many individuals. Hallelujah. Listen to me. In 2004, I wanted the anointing so badly. I had been seeing the manifestation of God's spirit in my life. And Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. Are you listening to me? Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. I left Zaria and I ran to Joss. The first day, there was a mighty manifestation. Hundreds of thousands of people came. Are you listening to me? The second day, I was angry. You know why? Because I didn't serve in that crusade. I knew that when you honor a man, listen to me. Honor opens the door of any man's anointing. You will never receive of the anointing of a man you dishonor and criticize i went pastor listen for six hours i was standing in that crusade ground you know what i was doing i was looking for what to do there was nothing to be done later on i saw them pushing people who were sick i said beautiful i said can i join them they say i'm not part of the committee they train them i said committee or no committee I came from Zaria with a hunger. I was pushing the people and I was praying in tongues. Nobody knew me then. Without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I pushed the wheelchairs, I stood there. People were packed full. And I stood there. I said, Lord, I honor this servant of yours. I know that this man is great. I didn't give him any seed. But I honored him in my spirit. I said, Lord, I believe this guy is a carrier of an anointing. I respect it. I believe it. I covet it. When I stood there, Renard Bonke finished preaching. And they, they prayed for people for salvation. They wanted to pray for baptisms. Then, I had not started praying for people for baptism. And I said, Lord, how can one man 
pray for hundreds of thousands of people and they will receive the Holy Ghost. And I stood, I said, Lord, I believe. And I will never forget, Renard Bonke was going to drink water. Suddenly, I looked up. And for the first time, I saw the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bed that would be as big as this auditorium. Was just hovering around the people. You know his crusades, you stand. Suddenly, I saw it had silvery wings. And the, the Lord just took me to this scripture. Where Elisha told Elijah, if you can see me. If you can see me as I'm taking up suddenly i saw that bed i thought other people were seeing it but i realized that i was the only one who was seeing it do you know by the time i finished the encounter with that manifestation of the holy spirit i turned and i found out that i was already back in the stage i don't know when i turned to face bed. and from that day an anointing came upon my life there is no one i pray for for the baptism who does not get filled with the holy ghost Are you listening to me many of you have cultivated the attitude of dishonoring people i will never forget one time that i went to go and buy was it sugar cane or something and i saw two old women many of you will not honor them because they are not your pastor and i saw the old women just 10 or 15 naira i paid for them and they said you know how old women bless they were speaking and I didn't hear what they said, but I will never forget one thing one of the women said. He said, forever you will walk on gold. That's what she told me. Are you listening to me? As you see me like this, brothers and sisters, I am a product of many encounters and many anointings. Because I realize everything you have not seen in your life you have not known how to receive it whatever it is that you have not seen in your life you have not yet known how to receive it because it's available are you listening to me before charles and francis hunter died when i heard that they died i cried you know why i cried because i was planning that I was going to go to the US and my plan was that I was going to book two weeks with them guess what I wanted to go and do not to go and preach to them the way many of you want to do I wanted to go and scrub their toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks I wanted to beg them to allow me scrub the toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks and without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater Are you listening to me? It's a law. Whoever has what you do not have has the ability to impart it upon you. Whether it's your roommate, whether it's your brother. Listen, there are many barren women who will remain barren because they do not know how to open the doors of destiny. If you are a barren woman, Go and find a woman that has given birth and say, Madam, can I please wash your plate? And without controversy, the lesser. They may not pray for you. It's a law that happens automatically. Are you listening to me? See, 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 9 verse 1. The Bible tells us something. Because of time, I may not read it. Just write it. Look up, please. I studied my Bible and I saw that this principle was consistent. Do you remember the Bible talks about Solomon? Pastor, please sit down. Hallelujah. The Bible says Solomon was so blessed. He was so wealthy. Is that correct? When his news got round and the queen of Sheba heard about him, the Bible says the queen of Sheba gathered seeds. What did she do? How will you run to a man who is already prosperous and you are carrying seeds? Without controversy, the lesser can bring you into his realm. Cheaply. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says she came and met Solomon. And when she spoke with Solomon, the first thing she did, there's no time. The first thing she did was to acknowledge the fact that Solomon was greater than her. Listen, it is not weakness to realize that somebody is better than you. In this realm, there are people you are better than and there are people who are better than you. The ability to acknowledge them will open up their anointing for you. 
are you listening to me she acknowledged that truly there was no man like solomon and guess the next thing she did she packaged her gifts and she gave solomon question how do you bless a man who is already blessed are you listening to me because he has an anointing that can bring you to his realm that woman heard of the fame of solomon and said ah, ah no no i need to find out what is going on and the bible says she sold and solomon gave her everything she needed that's what the bible says are you listening to me if your brother or your sister is not married instead of casting out devils and getting angry go and find a married couple and look at them they just got married and say please um, I bought a small gift to just bless you and without controversy you are fulfilling a law in the spirit suddenly you see yourself walking in the anointing I used to see Benny Hinn I loved him so much I see honor doesn't just mean you package a seed the Bible says honor the Lord with your tithes many of you have been giving your tithes that's why the heavens are not open there is a way you carry it i'm not talking of being sanctimonious that you realize that i'm sowing to someone who is richer than me i'm sowing to someone who is more blessed than me and he will take me that's why the bible says, my god paul speaking shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory every time a woman's barrenness is about to finish god will send a man who is higher than her and say give him food what is god doing the widow of Zarephath. See, the Shunammite woman understood this. The moment she perceived he was a prophet of God, he said, quickly, let us build a place. And without controversy, whatever level you want to get to, there is a career of that anointing working in this earth. The reason is we have not honored them because some of them are your roommates in class. You go to class together, but you do not know the difference. Hallelujah. You have been castigating everybody who is married instead of sowing see let me tell you the truth i everybody i see every nice car that i see because i want to buy a car i just say lord thank you for this car if my friend buys a car today i will be the first person to provide fuel for that car i'm not a fool i know this principle are you listening to me you see why we are rich because we provide free bus transport for you I don't know the kinds of anointings that are here and i know that there are some anointings we do not have so we sow into your anointing by providing boss many of you are laughing and wondering why this ministry is increasing these are the laws are you listening to me every time i'm around a man of god when i went to dr akwami's church to minister it was an honor because he's a father in the land when I entered, people were there looking at me. Oh, this is the Apostle Joshua. When I went in front of Dr. Akami, I got down on both of my knees. I don't know him. He's not my spiritual father for some of you who have been misled and misguided with devilish doctrines. And I greeted him. And then I got up. Because without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Are you listening to me? Many of you sit down and watch men of God on TV and you say, Kai, this man's realm herself is so bad. You have not gotten to where he's getting to. You have three members and you are criticizing him. There are people who criticize me today and criticize us and never walk in the anointing. I tell you, you can listen to all my tapes. The heaven will remain short. That honor is a law. Are you listening to me? Look at the myriads of Nigerians in Abuja and Lagos queuing for jobs. Their yard mate goes to a, a lucrative office every day. Why not wake up early in the morning and polish his shoe and keep it for him? You may not understand what you are doing, but you are tapping into a law. I tell you, it will not take two weeks, they will call you. Are you listening to me? Respect this principle I'm teaching you. For your information let me give you a little secret about the prosperity of this ministry i'm sowing into the life of 
living faith i'm sowing into the life of kenneth copeland i'm sowing into the life of benny hin i'm sowing into the life of reinhard bonke i'm sowing into the life of kobus van rensburg i believe them when i got up i went to south africa i was fasting i was praying i didn't go to show that i'm going abroad i had serious business there he was a career of an anointing others were discussing and criticizing i said lord i know there is grace and i went there smith wigglesworth laid his hands on lester sumro are you listening to me and kobus was with lester sumro for one week and he laid his hands on me when i went there kobus looked at me he said i want to connect you to the lineage of the generals and he laid his hands on me three times sorry for all the people who carry every kind of rubbish news it's not by age if you understand the principle you will rise are you listening to me listen to me hear me my mother and my father laid their hands and blessed me for ministry and this is why i can never fail you don't know the hands and the anointings that are responsible for what you are seeing are you listening to me i respect the careers of this anointing i saw into the lives of blessed people Mike Mudok, one of my greatest financial mentors. I don't like him. I don't like him. He's a seed seed man. But he carries something I'm looking for. When he came to Koza, I couldn't, I couldn't make it. I was streaming in my room and praying in tongues for six hours, for three, three hours every day, beginning to the end of that program. I prayed for the internet, what I would have paid for my hotel bills. And some of you just get up and say, how are these people getting the anointing? And all kinds of stories. Hallelujah. Rather than sell, you, when you don't celebrate an anointing, forget about walking in it. I will never allow a man who is greater than me do what I can do for him. I go to a shop to buy something and I see an elderly woman. I, I will over my dead body for that woman to pay that money if I can pay. He mustn't be a pastor hallelujah you want to raise children you see a woman that raised eight children all of them are disciplined there is an anointing that woman can you can tap into it hallelujah i see ministries that represent the things i want even in the realms of prosperity i couldn't understand the prosperity on oedeko's life i studied this man and read his books i couldn't find the key I said, Lord, what kind of thing is this guy? I mean, what is it? I need to see something there. And the Lord told me, one day you are going to sow into his life. The day the Lord told me I went, I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. And I sowed into that anointing. I came out to enter the car and the Lord told me, come out. And I came out. He said, kneel down on that ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And the Lord said, from today, everywhere you go, the land will open for you. And people keep criticizing we go to cgc is packed full with people we come here packed full blue roof see when you see a man prospering find out what law is being operated it's god that oversees his laws i can't go to a restaurant with somebody that carries something see before all my brothers entered into a relation when they entered into a relationship i was concerned ask them valentine's day i was so into it Many of you are there grumbling and shouting and making noise. My sister is not married. What of me? Don't these guys like me? And you see your roommate who may not be as good looking as you look like. Every time she's cooking, where are you carrying this food? I'm cooking. I want to sow into an anointing. You are laughing at her. Then you see one clean brother who come out with his prosperity and say she's the one you will marry. And you, you see that God, you are not fair. Let me tell you, life will never change until you change it. For those of you who are waiting for things to change, are you listening to me? I'm showing you a law without controversy. The lesser is blessed of the greater. Hallelujah. I spoke to the protocol because we are trusting God for our boss. I told them, they told me that RCF, um, I mean, they were charging us a stipend for the boss. I said, very good. Because I was looking for a way to sow into their life. I'm looking for a boss. We're looking for a boss as a ministry. What do we do? 
we find a ministry that has what we are looking for and sow into it. Many people sit in Zaria here. They are broke. They are poor. Their ministries are broke. But people are running from Abuja, running from everywhere. They come and catch the fire and sow into the anointing. I'm not talking of seed. It's the law of honor. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. If you believe this, go and tell your brothers and sisters who are looking for jobs and looking for this and looking for marriage and looking for all of these things. Nothing will change. The Bible says when God saw their faith, faith can be seen. It's hope that cannot be seen. Many people have been doing hope. What they call faith. Sometimes I sit down and I'm watching television and I watch Benny Hinn, I watch Kobus, I watch all of these people, and I'm kneeling down. We took the leaders, hear me, and all the heads of department, because Commonwealth of Zion Assembly, they have a level of prosperity and excellence that is touching. You will be a wicked person to deny. Hallelujah. Other people were discussing, who are these people Said, Know this, know that. I told the leaders, Manasseh suggested it, and I said, quickly, the heads of department and the ministers we went and we lodged in an expensive hotel in abuja it wasn't because we wanted to waste money the lesser is blessed of the greater when we went there listen to me the head of department went to go and meet the head of department there and walked there the head of protocol went to go and meet them why will you be surprised that we are excellent and without controversy the lesser is blessed I'm showing you a key. I promise you, it will open any door. Every time I am in lack, I find those who are prosperous. Quick! Quick with the remaining money. I don't waste my time sitting. I don't waste my time. No, no! Listen, let me tell you something. Listen to me. Hi, Lord. In John 21, the Bible says, Peter said, I want to show you something. Your skill can fail you. Are you listening to me? It was a time of recession. I was saying, Lord, give me a word for this recession. I've had many preachers and God showed me something. Do you know Peter was a fisherman? Realize that there was a time Jesus told him, go and fish and take the mouth from the coin. That means your potentials and your gift is supposed to bring prosperity. However, there are times it can fail. What law do you engage in when it fails? Let me show you. The Bible says Peter went to fish and found out that there was no fish. Suddenly there was no fish. A fisherman who used to fish all the time, there was no fish. And the Bible says, when you went, Jesus saw them. Listen to what Jesus tells them in John 21. He said, children. How many people is Jesus older than among the disciples? He said, children. It was a test of honor. Children, have you caught any fish? They said, no. He said, cast your net. That's your past the test. They would have said, children. Peter said, I'm married. They killed all your age mates from two years and below. I'm not older than you with two years old. How can a man call them children? My mother started calling me her father. I promise you, her poultry and her business just expanded. Hey, could it be that you have been missing something? Could it be that your miracle has been passing you? And you have been praying and hitting keys in the spirit without knowing which door is opening. When my mother came here, that's why quickly, before we said anything, I did what? I called her. I said, speak to this work without controversy. When it was time for her to go back, I packaged a dangerous seed and I went and met her. I may be your son, but this is not the issue of son now. I tapped into that grace quickly. Many of you see careers of anointings that you want. And you just keep looking at them all the time. Mukhtar, his laundry services is doing very well. He's a leader. He finished serving from Engineering Students Fellowship. And he's very good. Let me tell you a little history about this guy. Are you listening to me? For one year, Mukhtar came and was, before he started his business, he was dry cleaning my suit for one year. One solid year as a seed. He knew what he was doing. 
when you see the worship team and all these people doing what they are doing they are tapping into graces there are many of you you are your job is to grumble and complain there are many people that I honor and sow into their lives it's not because they are nice people I look at the weakness of others and get the gold in them I'm interested in the anointing when, let me tell you when I'm watching a man that carries something I can slap you if you come to, dis, to, to, to disturb me I don't, I'm not the kind of person that is in church before you do it oh, I'm seen and you are not getting anything I give my rapt attention my spirit is open I'm saying Lord the, the guy may be joking for 30 minutes I'm tired of this joke show me this key and you sit down there there are times I play messages of Benny Hinn I'm not listening to the message I just want to saturate under the anointing and I'm praying in tongues I'm praying in tongues I'm praying in tongues for about one month that was the song that, that was, it was his worship songs that I slept with all through the night they will play all through the night i'm just trying to show you that this is not a mistake do you know that if you honor people final year students we have started our, our meeting with you tomorrow this night many of you see the ministers you just come because they are your colleagues you just tap them ah, edgy alpha i'm not saying you just lie down and lick people's leg but i tell you the truth you can sit down and tap into anointings I never go and see a man that is higher than me empty-handed no matter what happens even if it is 10 naira I must put it in my pocket and at the end of it I will bless him are you listening to me I want to show you that there are laws and there are principles that are working I repented from castigating people and criticizing people any grace that I see I humble myself I say Lord you have empowered these people suddenly sometimes i listen to the tapes once do you know aside from last week's tape there is no koinonia message i don't listen to i can easily say it's my ministry i download it i don't ask the media to bring it i want it to cost me something i download it and every time i'm prophesying or the man of god is prophesying rather i get down on my knees god is my witness i say lord i believe your servant He's about to speak a word. I believe the anointing he's carrying. I promise myself that for a long time, nobody will sow into this ministry more than me. It's not because it's my ministry. I believe in the anointing that is carried. Many of you come and you just sit down and look at people. You see the ushers. You see everybody. God is opening doors for them. You're just smiling and looking and complaining and ranting and shouting and doing all kinds of things. I tell you friends if you obey this law there is nothing that will not work for you your father was driven out of the job and his brother is still working that's the time for him to go and greet his brother go and greet his brother and say ah well done sir and when they get to filling station the remaining four thousand that is left carry two thousand inside and say please get fuel insist that they use your money and sow into the anointing that is working Do you believe this or many of you are still saying is that all do you believe this i tell you the truth see let me tell you if i were some of you seated here i promise you i will never allow any anointing pass me by unnoticed if i wake up in the morning blind by evening my eyes would have opened I will find everybody who is seen and clean their shoe. I will just say, I'm sitting with a rag and water and blind. Everybody whose eyes is open, please come and pass. Let me wash your leg. When God wanted men, he sowed his seed into the earth and Jesus gave birth to a harvest that is still happening till now. We are going to pray. I know we have taken time. But I'm showing you a mystery that will open every door for you. Find careers of your anointing. Whether it's, even if it's only once you meet them in your life. They may not be men of God. Some of them may not even be born again. Hallelujah. You sow into the anointings. 
every seed that comes into my life I divide it and I begin to sow the tithe of this ministry every week each and every week we are sowing it many of you have been giving but you have only been doing charity you have not been rising because you look and say ah God tells you package this seed go and sow it into Joshua Selman's life he said God, for God forbid I'm seeing suits like me I'll go and sow and you see somebody stand with a plate outside and he's begging you and you go and throw 20 naira you'll be rewarded because you did charity but that wealthy place you will not enter it no way it's not done that way are you listening to me during miracle service you are standing some of you are frowning and just looking these people say why are they always joking call my case instead of you to come and be praying and say lord part of my prayer request there is grace there is grace to receive you can honor a man even without him knowing and you receive that anointing go and see what koinonia messages are doing in foot mina go and see the kind the rip the miracles and the revival that is happening in foot mina I, I i wasn't even aware until someone started giving me stories i tell you people catching fire but there are some of you who are sitting down here you hear prophecies that will come and you just laugh where I wonder where you think your miracle is coming from. When Paul was going to Damascus and he fell, the Bible says God commanded Ananias. In other words, he recognized he was a carrier of that glory. And Ananias said, Brother Paul, God sent me that I should lay my hands on you, that your eyes be opened and that you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And Paul said, Yes. I've seen it in a vision and he laid hands on him. Many of you come in every week. You see prosperity. You see excellence. You feel God is calling you into ministry. Every time you see every man of God, you come and talk and look and say, Ah, Jakes, I saw you that day at the faculty. And suddenly the door is closed. You will secretly get his tape and listen to and you find out that the door is not opening. You can't find that key. Are you learning something tonight? Graduates, forget about that nonsense of trying to look for your uncle or auntie. If I were you, and we are going to talk tomorrow by 12, right here. As soon as you finish, go and find somebody that is working. Polish his shoe. While you are polishing, Kaboka Patakalia, Reto Soprendeke Pariyataba. God is calling you into ministry. You prepare or God told you you will marry a minister. Go and find a pa pastor. William's wife is coming here every week. Every week you are seeing her. After you finish, you say, ah, give me five. You just shake her. And the door closes and you shake empty hands. And somebody can come and say, Lord, if I may but touch the helm of his garment. That's how many of you keep sitting here. People come from other states. Less than 30 minutes, they have caught fire and caught an anointing. Are you getting blessed? I'm not saying you should give me money. I'm blessed. You know that. And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Every time you see people serving you and sowing into you and you are laughing, Say, Kai, that means I'm a big man. You are not wise. You should turn quickly and start finding a way. There is he that scattered and increased. There is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty. I can't be a failure in life. No way. Not when there is one career of an anointing. Hallelujah. When Pastor Biodu was going to bring Dr. Miles Munro, do you know what they did? What I mean, um, um, what's his name? The Mike Mudok. Do you know what they did? One month before he came, they got all his tapes and they made the choir to practice his songs. Say after me, honor. As soon as he was entering his hotel room, a grand piano was there playing the songs he wrote. He announced it on air. 
that in all his life and ministry he has gone around the world no ministry has honored him like this the honorarium that they were supposed to give him they doubled it times three and sold it into his life there are people who have been in abuja since 1991 1991 they don't have their building when he came into abuja he went and met the pastor with the largest church and greeted him many of you are there on campus god called me into ministry you are foolishly doing things there are people who have run this race before you you can't come and greet them you see them you just push them i taught somebody and they fell down it will tire you see now it's not it's not like before that they tell somebody no no you see stay back and let go 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 and do ministry hallelujah while on campus we were all already in ministry i tell you we we're men of god but i served in fcs till i finished i was a prayer secretary engineering students fellowship we we're already in ministry doing great things jakes was the president of naka Ejimi was QT, QT, uh, uh, he was in QT. Hallelujah. Manasseh was in faculty of arts. He was prayer secretary. Bishop became the prayer secretary after me, right? And then he became the president of Engineering Students Fellowship. Are you listening to me? We were ministry, but we knew the power of service and tapping into anointings that was higher than us. From there, I became the national prayer secretary of Conference of Nigerian Christian Engineering Students. Then we all were serving. Jakes became the president of some of the people who we got born again. Later became our leaders in FCS. And we still told them yes sir. We will go to their father's church and preach. And come and say yes sir to them. But we are still saying yes sir. Because it was about office not person. Are you listening to me? So why will you be surprised today. That he and I will never lack people who are serving. Are you listening to me? It's a law and it's a principle. After tonight's meeting, we're going to pray two prayer points. The first prayer point is you are going to ask God and say, Lord, I have allowed the careers of my anointing to pass me by without recognizing them. From today, open my eyes to practice the law of honor. I need to begin to work in uncommon results. There are careers. Rise up on your feet. Somebody's life is changing. I tell you, somebody's life is changing. This is one of the most powerful messages you would have heard in 2012. And without controversy, the lesser. I've given you a key tonight. I tell you, it will unlock any door. I don't care what that door is. It will unlock every door. Bakapatakata. Doors of jobs. Doors of ministry. Doors of business. Doors of power. Say Lord I repent. From dishonoring the careers. It may be your mother. It may be your father. It may be somebody by the roadside. It may be an elderly woman somewhere. An elderly man somewhere. It may be your head of department. It may be people around. Look beyond the man. See an anointing that can take you to a new level. And without controversy. The lesser is empowered, enriched, blessed, lifted, glorified, honored by the greater. Let this key open a door for you. Doors of greatness, doors of new anointings, doors of increase, doors of business doors of marriage, doors of family, doors of jobs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to pray and you are going to prophesy 
and say in the name of Jesus I honor every career of the anointing that I need in my life you may not meet some of them for the rest of your life but you can honor them and it can be recorded in the spirit it may be your mother it may be a woman that gave birth to a good or a woman that has a good husband you are looking for a good husband you want a new car you want a new job you want promotion you don't get it by dishonor some vessels are on to honor some vessels are on to dishonor if you can recognize this you are a wise man you are a wise woman we are rounding up come on pray Lord I serve with my seed I serve with my time I serve with good report in the name of Jesus I recognize anointings I respect anointings hallelujah hallelujah listen to me when you look at a man you may not know when you see a man who is anointed find out the encounters that brought that man to that level are you listening to me find out what level of grace someone may come up the podium or he may preach on tv he may not have the utterance you are looking for find out what brought him on tv that you have not yet gone somebody may come up here and may be preaching in house and you are having to they're having to interpret and you laugh as hey, this guy cannot preach you are there seated at the back the person is there in front there must be something he carried i tell you if you don't recognize this see let me tell you honor is not something you say uh, I did it in my heart lie lie is a law somebody will do it for you too so you have to honor any man not just a pastor whoever carries what you don't carry respect the sacrifice that brought it and you will see that you are stepping into it listen let me give you a secret for those of you who are preachers every time you go to preach in a place and you see someone who is higher than you in the anointing recognize the grace of god upon that man the meeting has opened unto you if you come with arrogance if i come today and manasseh is occupying a higher spiritual position than me and i refuse to recognize him i promise you you will struggle in that meeting the heavens will close i don't care what kind of anointing you carry it's a loss people don't know no matter who you are you won't change it many of you after now may need to send texts to certain people you have insulted careers of your anointing when they speak they spit on your face because of how they talk that's none of your business you are looking for something god knows why he didn't put it inside you and put it inside them hallelujah i have a big burden because there are certain kinds of anointings in this house I have not seen in the lives of many people yet and i know that is because many of you either do not honor it and do not respect it i'm not talking of lying and rolling on the floor my greatest my greatest desire is not to be a superstar joshua selman standing i tell you my greatest desire is that every one of you there are many anointings that are for the taking many of you don't know how to receive and let me tell you something the careers of your anointing are not always within your reach every day the price is more every day the price is more a day will come it will cost you more than it's costing you right now i tell you the truth there are many people for instance with all humility i when i used to have a lot of time you remember those times 
we'll sit down sometimes some of the ministers were around but right now we don't have that luxury every day it keeps moving further if you don't see it a time will come elijah will move you are looking you will not see the chariot someone will come from behind and see the chariot and carry a mantle say after me i have the ability of god how many people have gone to seek people out of zeal and kindness you are sick Sam in the name of Jesus be healed by their ability they want to see God's result but they are conscious of their ability no it is not given to man please hear me it is not given to man to produce God's result with his ability how many pastors and churches are frustrated because they are trying to get growth they are trying to get this and, and all kinds of teachings it takes the ability of god shout it god's ability listen listen i'm telling you this don't just allow the scientific world fool you the realm of the spirit controls the physical realm it was james the apostle that told us for as the body without the spirit there must be a spirit component to everything for it to work I don't care what it is if there is no spirit component it is there there must be a spirit component to business there must be a spirit component to your academics there must be a spirit component to marriage i love you i love you is not enough there must be a spirit component there must be a spirit component to anything that we do the problem is many times we ignore the spiritual side because we think it is not necessary oh my goodness oh my goodness how helpless a man is brothers and sisters how helpless in the face of this cruel life there are gates on every mountain there are giants on every mountain it doesn't take stories to move them it takes the ability There are devils standing on the gates of your finances. It takes the ability of God. Why do we need the ability of God? It's his power to effect changes. Listen. Change can never occur until the power of God is present in a place. Any kind of change. The ability to effect change from healings to miracles to soul winning to transformation it is entirely dependent on the ability of god there are so many people who try to do evangelism sincerely from their heart but there is no ability how many times have we stood in the face of situations that honestly demand the touch of god but we know that we are short of God's ability. God gave you his ability so that you can truly produce change. The Bible says in John chapter 15, it says, Herein is my father glorified when you bear much fruit. So then shall he be my disciples. God wants us to bear fruit, but it takes an ability. An ability higher and greater than yourself. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The second reason why we need the ability of God is to be able to produce supernatural results. Please write it down. Supernatural results. If your results are natural, the world does not have space for you. The 21st century does not have space for natural results. The minimum standard in our world today is a supernatural. It takes an ability of God for a mortal man to produce results out of proportion hmm. the bible says they were astonished when they saw jesus christ and they saw the kinds of results that he was producing let me tell you something don't ever allow anybody preach you into thinking results do not matter in the school of greatness only god sees the heart men can only see the outward appearance please are you hearing what i'm saying don't ever let anyone fool you it's god that can see the heart you can die with your good intentions if you want to influence men 
you must let your light shine not let your light glow it must shine for men to see not angels god wants them to see it it is in the seeing that they become persuaded therefore permit your light to so shine before men that they may see your good works and as a result glorify your father john 17 verse 1 jesus was speaking he said now the hour has come he was speaking to the lord he said glorify now thy son to the end that thy son will bring you glory so the only way god is glorified is when we are glorified our glorification is a means to an end not an end in itself it gives god the opportunity because no man can praise himself you need another to praise you it's against the law of greatness for you to praise yourself when you praise yourself it's called arrogance when another man praises you it's called honor hallelujah so we need the ability of god to produce changes there are people here who are sick it doesn't take stories we can shout and jump around and just make a lot of noise when they tell your dad in the office or your mom we are going to fire you brothers and sisters it takes the ability of the spirit to change it when the landlord tells you tomorrow if you cannot bring your money you are out it takes what the ability of god the problem is this we have ignored the ability of god in the church we believe in god but we have ignored his ability that anointing that agency of the spirit that empowers men to produce change and to produce result this ministry by the grace of god is a testimony of god's ability the ability of god walking through men And I want that to become your testimony from tonight. That tonight you will give up on just trying to get things happen by your strength. When you depend on God's ability, you will see results that are out of proportion. Praise the Lord. Tonight is a very simple teaching. Until the ability that is within a believer is released, he can never be a blessing to his generation i want you to know this until the ability that is resident within a believer is released not acquired not gotten your being anointed does not make any meaning to your generation until that anointing is released the release of that ability is what brings about blessings the bible says no man lights a lamp and puts it under a bush no man does that but you the purpose of lighting it is so that it can give illumination and direction so until the ability or the anointing is released the believer can never be a blessing you only become a blessing when you allow the measure of God's ability in you to find expression in your physical world the Bible says, and the word became flesh and did what? It now dwelt among men and they beheld the glory. They could never behold the glory for as long as it was in the realm of the spirit. But when it became flesh, Shadrach, it's good to see you. I'm happy seeing my people. Praise the Lord. The word became flesh. The anointing that God has given you, when it translates into wisdom that men can relate with, when it translates into creativity that men can relate with when it translates into dunamis power the capacity to produce change here and now then christ is glorified otherwise we'll keep talking a lot of stories that which is resident within you must find expression for christ to be glorified are we together now now the problem with many of us seated here is not that we are not anointed it's not that the hand of god is not upon our lives but that inability to understand the dynamics of expressing the ability of god is what has crippled us and so we stand before mountains we can walk over and yet we cry before them the reason is because we have not come to a point where we realize that the ability of god is at work in us moses listen moses stood before the red sea 
God did not add anything to him right there there was the ability to cross over but he was afraid when he went back God just said why are you coming to me I gave you a rod the word is in your mouth tell the people to move forward he went back and did what he would have done in the first place do you know that many times when you go to God most of the things you get from him is comfort because actually you have the ability to do what you do but just because our psychology is built around just hearing something from God and so God said it is well now go and then you get up and go you would have done that right away are you getting what I'm saying now your going and that reception of comfort was just to encourage you but all the while the ability was within you when he appeared to Gideon in the book of Judges chapter 6 when he looked at him what did he call him oh thou mighty man of failure but Gideon was hiding there was no special impartation service he just said Gideon what is going on ah, Gideon said God you too you know what is going is happening and he began to tell him how that he was going to go and defeat the Midianites there is an ability within you I'll never forget the first time God told me this thing listen it's not enough to know God is mighty this was a song that gave me that revelation you know this song Lord you reign forever Lord you reign forever I worship you yes ago I was singing this song I worship you this was the part that changed me you reign you reign you reign you reign that's you talking to the lord and i heard it very clearly like a man singing back to me this was what i heard you reign cause i reign you reign cause i reign you reign this is what god is telling me back he's responding to my worship and saying son it's not enough to know i reign there's no confusion about that the trouble is here on earth so reign because I reign now that you are aware I've told you you are like me I expect a legislation that is consistent with what is happening in heaven that way the kingdom comes it's not enough to say Lord I know you are reigning what is happening to us here we are dying keep reigning let's keep dying no no it says thy kingdom come thy will be done where in the earth not in heaven there is no confusion about order in heaven the confusion is here so he says rain and it gave me an understanding not just these things people jump around I'm a king I'm a king and go and die like a fool you jump based on knowledge and revelation see you can have something and you can take it anywhere believe me I know what I'm saying a man can have something and you can hold on to it and run with it That's what God is speaking to us. He reigns, so you reign. He reigns, so you reign. So he expects you to legislate. Ah! Listen, listen. A man called St. Patrick. Have you heard about St. Patrick? A man called St. Patrick, the son of the king, had died for six months. How many months? six months they had buried him and he was he was bringing a lot of catastrophe and that man called saint patrick's walked straight to the grave and signed his name on it saint patrick and they opened it and dug out a human being alive it's in history men who knew they had something not independent of god listen with god all things are possible i've demonstrated it for you here come promise can i use you again with promise all things are possible without him some things are no longer possible but with him the word with god here means in partnership in partnership that's why we call it koinonia in partnership there is an ability you and god constitute an unbeatable team have you watched wrestling how they can beat somebody as if they are passing him through a meat machine and then on the other side his colleague is there bouncing and saying touch me show that you 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 are weak but we are a tag team is that true if you win we share the money together if you lose we lose together 
it's a partnership and so the holy ghost is standing and telling you look look you have been going around this mountain why don't you come into partnership with me there is an ability within you listen listen there is an ability it's called energes the greek word is energes it says now unto him philippians 3 uh, uh, 20 unto him who is able he has an ability to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think not according to his might according to the power that works not in heaven in you in you the possibilities in your life are dependent on activating the anointing and the ability of the spirit within you and so like the wrestling someone lifts his hands and have you seen the way people touch the other i mean they almost have no strength and they touch somebody else and he jumps in and plays nonsense with the one who has been beating his colleague and wins and then he holds the guy who is a team together and they lift the belt together he doesn't leave the belt and say you when you are tired stand up and walk home he lifts him and says we won listen i'm bringing you into a revelation that your victory starts from the standpoint a consciousness that with you and the holy ghost never do anything outside of the holy ghost you will fail it's not a prophecy it was designed to happen that way master we have toiled all night but in partnership with your word let's go back and watch a miracle are you hearing what i'm saying now prophet elijah outside of the holy spirit he could not say anything he said look guys you want prophecy from me i can't move my human ability cannot do anything but play me a mistrial and the moment they began to play when the holy ghost came upon him he said now i have something to say fill these ditches with water you may not see wind you may not see rain yet the valley shall be filled with water listen that is not yet possible in your life does not mean it is not possible it's amazing how a challenge can be killing you and somebody will come and pass it as if it does not exist there is an ability that sponsors that audacity and i want you to know that if you are in christ that ability is within you there is an ability i walk conscious of this every time i go to minister i walk conscious of this and the lord walking with them and the Holy Spirit walking, not just in Joshua Selman, but with Joshua Selman. There is a partnership, it's a koinonia. We are inseparable. It's like the, a salt covenant. Where I am foolish, I trust his wisdom. Where I am confused, there is strength. When I stand before a sick body, I know I am very aware. I'm intelligent enough to know that you cannot squeeze out cancer from somebody and it disappears at once i'm smart enough to know that that cancer is matter it has weight it can occupy space but then when his ability comes when his ability comes that's when the difference see listen don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you this is your recipe this is your key to unstoppable unstoppable exploits in the kingdom the ability of the spirit thank you let's take a few things i want us to pray let's take down a few things you must allow the measure of god's anointing within you to find expression and produce testimonies in the lives of people just two or three things i'll say again and then we'll pray God's ability in a man can grow and it can increase. The ability of God that is resident within a man can grow. Every living thing grows. God's ability is alive and so it can grow. That you have received a measure of that ability. Listen, listen. The ability of the spirit in a man is like currency. Let me explain to you something. Please look up. Please look up. Who has money? Somebody give me money. 1,500. Thank you. Watch this. If 
this is 200 naira how many things can 200 naira buy 200 naira can buy a bottle of minerals is that true can it buy wine but is it money at least he can buy some things are you getting what i'm saying now let me explain to you something about god's ability god's ability in you can only solve problems that are within the range of the dimension of that ability anything higher than that measure watch this that measure cannot be solved although you have the ability listen 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 i want you to get this the ability of the spirit the anointing of the spirit at work in people is in levels and there are possibilities that are activated within that level and that measure are you getting what i'm saying when the measure of god's ability is at work in you every problem every giant every mountain that is within that range of power will be solved but everything higher than it will remain an obstacle get this revelation and you will see the reason why although you are anointed some things have not changed praise the lord are you getting what i'm saying now thank you just like this currency watch this this is 200 naira it can buy wine mama put you can eat something with this now yam and, and akarankose watch this i can eat akarankose at mama put with this comfortably with dignity can this take you to a five-star hotel the restaurant but is this money so what do you need to do if you want to go to a five-star hotel increase the same thing not a different thing increase a measure of the very same thing are you getting what i'm saying listen that you have a measure does not mean the challenges in life respond to measures of the anointing measures of graces don't let any man fool you that the moment you have an ability it can solve every problem it's not true those who talk those things have not worked in the anointing believe me i know what i'm saying this is what i work in every day it's like a range when you upgrade on the level of the anointing that's why the bible says he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my feet but i got to a level where that would not be enough again then he had to measure a thousand cubits and the river increased and it was to my knees are we together now and then he measured a thousand cubits and it was to my lungs then he measured a thousand cubits and it was an overflowing river and he said everywhere that river went whatever was dead came alive there are different levels of the anointing the ability of the spirit so a mountain can jump and leave and you go to another mountain and you can be shouting everything you know and the mountain steers you there are sick bodies that we may struggle around with in many crusades in nigeria and those sick bodies can be there let benihin step in just two songs of worship i guarantee you not he has not even if he's talking about relationship it doesn't matter he can even teach on how to be a nice housewife and while he is teaching see the anointing does not care what is happening it whenever it sees a need and a demand for it it flows there immediately are you getting what i'm saying now so god's ability in you responding to a situation you can have a challenging issue that looks like a mountain and someone comes with the ability of god and brings a dimension of wisdom you never thought of and dissolves that thing in one minute and it's over case closed the ability of the spirit that was what happened to daniel they were about to slaughter them and kill them and he said ah, ah why is the king hasty in this all these people have tried their ability he said please just give us time and the bible says in the night the secret was revealed to daniel and he got up in the morning and answered the king same thing happened to joseph see how men took their generations by the ability of the spirit joseph did not become a prime minister because of interpretation of dreams joseph became a prime minister because he offered a very serious supernatural solution to the problem if he had interpreted dreams they would have said okay we have had you please um water go and lock him up and he would have just gone back highest they would have given him a day off and he's back to the prison but he was smart enough in addition to the dream he said i know this is the answer this is what we should do 
and when he said that look at him i love joseph he said oh king find a man he knew there was no man find a man check around don't trivialize my grace find a man if you can find another man with it no problem and the king said is he not here we kept quarreling asking people to come and interpret the dreams where can we find such a man that's why we worship the lord truly because there is nobody like him are you getting what i'm saying that's the reason why we worship him we love him searched all over couldn't find nobody i looked high and low still couldn't find nobody nobody prayed nobody prayed no nobody prayed and there is something the spirit of god will do to you that this song will become for you not not just for god i want you to always be conscious of god can give you a territory my brothers and my sisters i want you to listen to me god can put something upon your life that will make let me not go ahead of myself thank you sir That you come to a point where there is something in you without any show of pride you know it's not cheap and you know it's not what you find by the roadside listen when you explore the ability of God in you from border to border you will enter your Sabbath experientially I guarantee you hmm. the Bible says now there remained a rest for the people of God Hebrews chapter 4 right and he says let us therefore labor the word labor there is content even as unto death to enter that rest for he that has entered that rest has ceased from his works there are two ways the ability of god in you can grow number one is by revelation 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 grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge through knowledge the word knowledge there's the word translated epignosis a comprehension of truth that makes the person who is knowing it and what is known become one not just awareness is actually the word that is interpreted intercourse so grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge hallelujah hmm. revelation when light comes to you then you will arise the bible says they that sat in darkness they have seen a great light great light arise and shine isaiah 60 he says for your light is come not your light is around the light has come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you it says it's one revelation god gave me watch this please if you are if you're a minister of the gospel here let me share with you a secret please look up money does not make a great ministry are you hearing what i'm saying you don't let any man fool you money does not make a great ministry it is impact that makes a great ministry and supplies finances financing ministry is a product of impact are you getting what i'm saying now impact and this is how it happens when your light starts shining gentiles will come unbelievers drug addicts all kinds of people will come kings will never come to your light when you become consistent and you keep growing it will start attracting brightness and excellence is a language there are those who know how to speak it the moment you start speaking their language they will come it says gentiles shall come to your light there is a level of ministry where all you see are gentiles people who are coming to be saved those coming to be sick somebody dragging his trolley of problems and coming to dump it and then you have to work on it but the time will come 
as your light begins to become bright like the day kings will start coming kings don't come to your light they come to the brightness the brightness of your rising and when they come like queen sheba they will not come empty-handed they will come with their bounties they will come with their blessings the wise men from the east when they saw jesus christ they came with gold they came with frankincense they came with man they came to honor him every time there is brightness it begins to draw certain kinds of people so there are many men of god who are trying to look for money they are trying to look for money because they think money makes an impactful ministry what an error it doesn't work that way money is only a reward money is a receipt for doing something right we've learned it here when you get money as a man of god it's a receipt just like you buy something the receipt means you are paid for it not you will pay for it the receipt is an evidence that something has been done not is being done not will be done but the problem is we trivialize the ability of the spirit in us how many of us have looked like gideon and felt that there is nothing within us oh there is that great man of god there there is that great woman of god there and we forget mary was there standing and an angel appears to her and says blessed are you women among this and that and that and then he told her that she was going to carry a child and she said how shall these things be in other words naturally this should not happen seeing that i know not a man and the angel said something which is key for us this night it says the power of the highest that's how it happens the power of the highest shall overshadow you how can i be the last born in my family and yet i'm the one god will use to wipe the tears of people he says the power of the highest there is an ability of the spirit that can come upon you the second key to growing in the anointing and in god's ability is impartation 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 is a transference of spiritual virtues transference of spirits transference of possibilities a man who is a possessor of a dimension of possibility can share it like you use a candle to light another it is a possibility in the spirit that's the character of the dimension of god's ability called dunamis it's an ability that is capable of being reproduced listen i've said it again and again a true leader does not maintain followers a true leader reproduces himself and turns followers into leaders if joshua selman remains a superstar and an anointed man everybody keeps clapping i have failed from the world's perspective and from the perspective of mediocres we keep clapping but let me tell you something god's dimension of measure or his index of measuring success is not just by the crowd we have inside and outside it is the individuals becoming a replica of his grace and anointing and his ability god measures success one by one he doesn't measure success by a crowd thank god for all of that it's an evidence of the hand of god but if we are to sample 10 people at random and engage you with spiritual challenges and see how you are able to navigate through the dynamics of the operation of the spirit it is a true measure of the success of this ministry the ability to be empowered and carry that conviction and go and begin to produce results around your sphere of influence and i insist that it must happen to you in the name of jesus christ so impartation and revelation write this down very quickly the channels for releasing the ability of god the ability of god must be released please burn this into your mind i'm being very simple tonight because i want us to have this basic understanding before we pray the anointing the ability of the spirit must be released for people to be blessed by it it must be released 
it's not just the obtaining of the ability of God but the dispensing the release of it that's what brings blessings to people God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me God's ability God's ability is working in me it's working in me it's God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me sing it with me God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me and so when a mountain stands before you and you carry this ability you will move with audacity humanly speaking you should chicken out come on but i love david david stands with a sling conscious of an ability that is bigger than him and goliath said am i a dog i know i'll kill you but at least respect me come with knife as if you are fighting a man and david said i will not i would disgrace you let me even tell you how i will kill you this is what will happen this sling will hit you and i will remove your head it's god's ability when you see men do supernatural things brothers and sisters i want you to know it's god's ability what you see happening tonight is god's ability the energy the very strength of God manifested as wisdom manifested as power manifested as faith manifested the, the ability of God is what we call grace whether grace to become or grace to do is all called grace and it's God's ability that's what makes men champions that's what makes men wonderful people is the ability of God the ability of God is like a programming it's like a software when it enters you you are infected there's nothing you can do about it the moment you carry it your environment begins to respond that's the treasure that we have in earthen vessels it's not about the vessel but the treasure and God designed it the only way you benefit from the treasure is to carry the vessel along that's the reason why when a man is anointed you don't bring out the anointing and keep him you carry the man too as you honor the anointing you honor him when you bless the anointing anointing cannot eat is the vessel that eats it as his benefit for paying attention it's working in me look at the bible full of people who took advantage of this divine ability If you get this one thing I'm teaching you, you will change your life in a remarkable way. Hallelujah. Play this mic. Aaron sent me a text before I came here, Pastor. And um, he sent me a text and said, Man of God, I want you to explain to me what exactly happened in Port Harcourt. And then I looked and he said I was going to talk with him. I shared my Port Harcourt story. I shared it here, right? Pastor, he came from Port Harcourt. It's a land of greatness and a land of plenty. Listen, I was going to Port Harcourt and all I had, watch this. Although God has corrected me recently because I've been running my mouth saying things. I've grown now. God has corrected me recently. In one of my retreats, I've been corrected. So I will I update my curriculum. Because I keep saying all I had was my bag. That bag was a seed. I know the kind of faith that brought that bag. That bag was a seed. I remember dragging that bag. And the ministry was about this size then. Everybody. And they were all escorting me. As if they were going for a funeral. And that was how we went to the park. That park, in, um, that park on your way to Kaduna. Just this one. Yes. That Kwangila Park. And they dropped me there and I was laughing. 
they were pity because they knew aside from my boss fare all i had left home and abroad in terms of monetary value was 800 naira and i was going to a land i had never gone to but i did not like the woman in second kings chapter 4 i forgot that i had an ability i kept looking at my rickety bag and all of this listen i dropped at number 23 query street around to two in the afternoon when i dropped there i knew i was stupid for sure because no right thinking human being would do what i had done and i stopped there 800 naira and i knew it would be foolish for me to try to look for a hotel to stay so the closest thing was at least to finish up the 800 naira and eat something with it so i went to one my mother was sharing something and watch this one thing i knew was that i was going to reign in that land i didn't know how to describe it but i knew there was an ability sometimes you need to come to the end of your road to now find out what you have been calling spare part whereas that is all you need second kings chapter 4 the woman lost everything the husband used the children as collateral when everything had gone the prophet said what do you have in your house he said nothing except and he said you call it except the vessel is only the oil is small because of the vessel that took it not because it is small once you expand capacity the oil will increase with it he said the oil is much it's only because the oil was housed in a small vessel borrow vessel enlarge your capacity and when that woman did that she became rich with it so i went there i'll never forget when i was eating the holy spirit just sent a signal to my spirit and i found out one of my friends that used to live there and i called him and i told him i'm here this and that and that can i come and stay for a while and then i came i went to the house and i stayed there listen my money had finished let me tell you what happened i was broke there was i mean things were bad then his sister was sick when his sister was sick i wasn't happy that she was sick don't misunderstand me but at least i was comforted that something <laughs> listen undertakers are not happy that people die but at least it is the make <laughs> are you getting what i'm saying now and so when she said she was sick i prayed for her when she was healed she came with a seed of 1000 naira listen that 1000 naira was what i used to buy my suit to do my first ministration the suit was not what you sell around the suit was this kind you see this kind that they move around with it you just call the man listen let me tell you a secret it's better than many things they hang around nobody will know it's only you that will know ah. oh yes are we together now i remember my friend in abuja calling one pastor in portacourt and say a mighty man of god is in town and he said all kinds of things about me and the man said and then it happened to be that the man was from my state watch this <sighs> no 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 play that thing i'm going to sing this song a lot this song we started that's our special number for this night that god's ability song listen god is my witness when i took a bike to go and see the pastor he hosted us and another person we ate in his house and then he went to go and introduce me to the church as soon as i stepped into the building my eyes were open and i gave the pastor three prophecies three prophecies in the church are you with me three days after the prophecy the first one happened 0.5 million came into the church the overseer said call that man he's coming to preach on sunday ah! there is an ability oh, it can open doors when all else fail Makata Labada. yes many things in life can fail don't trust them the real capital in your life is the anointing that one is fail proof certificate can fail internet can fail brother when all else fails reach out deep down God's ability God's ability is working in me. It's 
working in me. Listen, I went to the church. I bought the suit with the money. I can't remember how much. Dress looks smart. You will never know. Because I, I refused to. I knew that my present was a thing I just had to manage with. In my mind, I was light years ahead of my present. So I wasn't embarrassed by it. Because I knew my physical reality will necessarily, necessarily become my mindset and my perspective. When I went there on that Sunday morning, it was a Sunday morning. I was on my way to come and they sent me the message to preach. They said I should preach about vow. I said I fasted for three days for this opportunity. And you are now sending me the message. God had already given me a word. Listen, the man with the church was a prophet. He doesn't come out until after the service. When you finish preaching, he will now come out and do his thing. When I stepped in and I looked at the people, I had never seen a congregation of people who were that demonized. And... Um, there was, you know, we are used to, we write our songs in Zaria, right? So it's very difficult to sing these songs outside because we write our songs. We receive them, we compose them. And I didn't know the kind of song to raise because uh, I wasn't used to all those songs. Our songs, you can be humming for 30 minutes. You don't do that there. There was one song that I remember. Now is the time for the new anointing. Gird up your loins and be ready. Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. That was a song I raised. My goodness, that meeting, that meeting was something else. It was, it was, it was an amazing meeting. You can imagine the things that God did. After that meeting, I had honorarium. I ate in the house of the pastor. They took me to another place. You know how they are. They are not like the not here that ignore your grace till you die. <laughs> right there, once they see grace, they celebrate it immediately. It's not in the notes that they will just look and say, can you help me? No. They know how to... Am I lying, pastor? Come on now. They celebrate grace very generously. And so we went there. And from that meeting, they said two weeks after the church was going to have a convention and I was going to be their major speaker. Listen from that time it was one meeting after one meeting after one encounter after one encounter after one encounter after one encounter and within six months my life had changed changed in a way I didn't even know where I was coming from again it had so changed the road had deleted behind me never to return there again that's why I never forget his ability when all else fail today I've stood before kings I've stood before politicians none of my certificates have brought me before these people but an ability of the spirit are you hearing what I'm saying so don't ignore it especially for some of you who are in school read your book but don't fool yourself the world we live in needs an ability of the spirit needs an ability of the spirit Let's finish up. Hmm. The primary channel for releasing God's ability is your words. 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 Where the word of a king is, there is power. Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me. The spirit entered me when he spake unto me. The spirit entered me when he spake unto me. An impartation, a dispensing of that anointing. He said, and it set me upon my feet. Listen, there are people sitting now hearing me. You will stand up from this meeting. And it's like something will suddenly rise within you. And you will say, I know I may not be any other thing, but I'm anointed. I may not be any other thing Kabbalah I was teaching the school of ministry students and I taught them no matter what society says you are not they may be right but they are wrong when they say you are not anointed hmm. they may be right they may say you are not fine it may be true they may say you are from a background where the map of your village was not added when they were you don't even use gps to find it they are right 
but if they ignore the anointing they are wrong the anointing will make nations follow you on their knees and it will be a privilege for them to receive of your grace you will be standing surprised while they are saying thank you God's ability is released through words number three your hands listen please look up I know that many of us have ignored our hands I want everybody to look at your hands if you can these hands it's working in you God's ability God's ability is working in you is working in you listen these hands you see brothers and sisters a hand is a mystery in the realm of the spirit a hand is not what holds people that's why the bible talks about the right hand of god it talks about the hand of god the hands are also doors in the spirit they are channels for releasing the anointing the work of a man is done through his hands when you realize that there is an ability on your hands it will bring upon your life creativity it will bring upon your life innovations you will do things through your hands you will never believe possible these hands these hands can open the gates of nations to you these hands can bring kingdoms to their knees these hands can swing the two leaf gates of your destiny open God's ability God's ability is working in me it's working in me brothers and sisters you are getting blessed right now because I am speaking you are not hearing English some of you you don't even know what is happening to you as you are listening to me you don't know whether you should sit down whether you should stand up because there is an ability my mouth is a window it's a window revealing the realm of the spirit it's a window communicating the secret place something is happening to your spirit as you are receiving this is not a lecture this is not a lecture it's an ability the power of the holy ghost it's working in you. <laughs> He's working in you. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's working in you. It's working in you. And so as you speak, the opening of your mouth is like the opening of the portals in the spirit. And you begin to speak as you communicate those realities you are changing people they don't even know what is happening to them they just know that there is an activity it's not english it's not oratory it's called utterance 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 is by the ability of the spirit it's not a lecture you are changing men you are using words to bring them into an experience they cannot explain the ability of god walking in a man and so the spirit enters you the words come with fire the words come with illumination they do something to your spirit man it's like light some of you sometimes you don't even know what you are receiving you can't tell what is happening to you it's like hammer it's like fire you can't tell it's an ability it comes help that many please it comes from heaven an ability of the spirit God's ability. Be sensitive. I sense the anointing of the Holy Spirit already moving. We're going to pray. It's working in me. That's what I want you to become. So anointed. So full of his ability. The Bible says even God who quickened the dead and uses his mouth to call things. He uses his mouth to make things happen that would not have happened. The prophet said by this time he was not revealing, he was creating. It wouldn't have happened. His words created it. He's working in me. Listen. Many of us have been speaking. 
it's time for us to be communicators of light and power it's time for us to be communicators of divine reality i see the angels of the lord pouring what looks like oil on people this is what i see it's like an anointing coming on people strong anointing of the holy ghost god's ability it's an ability it's an ability of the holy ghost that the opening of your mouth is a gate in the spirit working in me working in me god's ability it's God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Shake a tabala baba baba. God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. It's working in me. Sing it with me, everybody. God's ability. God's ability is working in me. Shaba baba la kata baba la baba. It's God's ability. It's God's ability. It's working in me. Listen. Listen. The third way the ability of God is dispensed is through the instrument of your atmosphere. Mm. Listen, when you carry the ability of God, that ability creates like a spiritual electromagnetic field around you. Anybody that comes within that atmosphere, possibilities just like many of you are under this atmosphere right now and then sicknesses will leave just by themselves without any prayer there is an ability of the spirit when Saul came into an atmosphere where there was a principality called Samuel the atmosphere affected him and the spirit of prophecy fell upon him when the ability of God is at work in you, your atmosphere has prophetic implications. Your atmosphere has prophetic implications. It's working in me. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's ability is released by faith you release the ability of god by faith let me explain to you what i mean the ability of the spirit listen is released on the strength of conviction your persuasion about who god is and what he has put in you sponsors your audacity to take action Action based on that consciousness is called faith. We've taught a lot of dogma about faith. Faith is nothing based on just human asset. Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your persuasion of who God is. And then the Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word. Listen, the anointing of the Spirit is the principal capital in your life please hear me action that is based on your conviction as action that is based on expectation by the ability of the spirit so your hands you expect that people will receive impartations this is how it works brothers and sisters there is an ability in you there is an ability in you you must know this there is an ability in you 
is it's not it's not about some gimmicks please this is not even about falling down it's called the mystery of godliness where god can dwell in a man so your body is like a puppet they are seeing you but there is another agency at work it's called the ability of god that's what will make you a wonder men will keep looking when they think they have exhausted you then you come from another dimension because you are connected to a supply that is eternal not bounded with time no fatigue is not bounded to the limitations of this system it's the ability of god the ability of god reproduce again and again and again and again it's not about trial and error you can gain mastery in the dispensing of his ability yes yes strong meat belongs to those who are of full age who by reason of use they have gained mastery it's like fighting god's ability it's god's ability he's working in me that's why we can tell you to come for this meeting and we can guarantee that you will be blessed yes we can guarantee not on the strength of the flesh there is an ability no man's hardness can stand it no matter how stubborn you are it doesn't make any difference because when he shows up the bible says the voice of god upon the waters is mighty listen this is what happens in the teachings there are many people here who have come from other places and they cannot explain what happens to them when they listen to these teachings it's not so much about the revelation there is an ability in it that compels compliance it's called anakazo it's a greek word it's the compelling power of the spirit It is with that ability that we can prophesy over your life and your job and it will change listen it's not just saying change change receive all those things are garbages what is the ability that sponsors it for i am a man under authority he says and on the strength of that authority i tell one go and he will go i tell one come and he will come how can cancer die god's ability how can a jobless person get a job before Monday? God's ability. How can a, a, a life, I mean, come on, think about it, people. It's the ability of the spirit. It's not by might. It's not by power. There is an ability bigger than your effort, bigger than your strength. It's God's ability. Help them, please. God's ability is working in me. It's working in me. There are three rewards when you can press to manifest the ability of God. There are three rewards. Reward number one is to become a desirable personality nations will desire you because you carry that which is needed they may criticize you but they will desire you there is too much darkness in this world for the careers of the anointing to be ignored it has nothing to do with ministry that's the key to being an ambassador the nations will look for you when you carry this capital called the anointing it will open gates you will become Beulah you will become Hefziba the delight some land you will become greatly desired when you carry this anointing listen I have met men and women that no level of qualification in life would have given me access to them at this level and I am amazed I am amazed I travel all the time and I am humbled 
people love me from regions to regions it's not just that they love joshua selman many of them don't even know me there is something when you carry it you become a joy of nations when you carry that anointing you become desirable the anointing will make up for your weaknesses it will make up big time listen listen years ago there was somebody who wanted to go to nda and there is a height there is a level to which if you are not as tall as that height they will not take you and the person who wanted to go there was lower than that height and when he went they dismissed him and he went and met the emir of zaria and the emir of zaria sent him with delegates that they should go and tell the commandant and the people that the emir has added his height did you hear what i said that the emir has added his height and they took him that's what the anointing does where you cannot enter others are entering because they're intelligent others are entering because they have connection when they come they ask you what do you have and then you say god's ability god's ability is working in me is working God's ability, God's ability is working in me. Listen, they may, they can't ignore you for too long. It won't be too long, somebody will be confused. You will be needed immediately. It won't be too long, somebody will be sick. Demons are still on earth which guarantees that you remain valuable. Listen, listen. For as long as there is a demand for your anointing, you remain valuable. Business tells us until you have something you are unnecessary. The anointing keeps you valuable forever. Stocks can rise and fall. Oil can rise and fall, but the anointing has equal value in every territory. God's ability. Listen, when you carry Naira, when you carry Naira, as soon as you get to London with Naira, Naira is no longer valuable. Is that true? You have to change it to another currency. When you travel to Israel, you have to change the pounds or euro to shekels to be able to use it. When you travel to Asia, you now have to change it to yen and the rest to use it. But the anointing, the way it works in Nigeria, when you get to UK, there is no translation, there is no downgrading. Same sickness, same demons, same challenges. Listen. Rich men fall sick. Rich men get confused. Politicians get confused. Have you seen certain businesses that are only for certain people? You only sell pampas for children. Abi, and an adult who is sick, an old man. A young man doesn't need pampas. Are you getting what I'm saying? You, you only bab somebody like me who always wants his hair low. If you want to shine it, let it shine. This is the way you do it. But somebody who keeps his head doesn't need it. There are certain things in life that are only for a group of people. The anointing is a master capital. It is relevant anywhere, everywhere, and at all times. You need it in business. You need it in your academics. You need it in marriage. Pursue me, students. You need it in your pursuing me. No, 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 no. It's not just by the Y, the X. There is an ability. Let me tell you early enough. There is an ability of the spirit. Because you can write an exam well. And somebody can be marking your exam. And your script will fall down. There is an anointing that guarantees it remains there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number one, it brings you... It makes you greatly desired. Number two, the ability of God gives you favor with men. Ah. 
please listen to my message activating seasons of greatness favor with men and it does that in three dimensions it gives you access to people access to resources and access to opportunities these are the three things any man needs to succeed access to people access to resources access to opportunities the anointing brings access not everything is solved by money access is greater than money access 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 hallelujah it's God's ability listen we went Benin we went Benin recently for a meeting I say these things to encourage you after the meeting some people came in from Asaba and they shared a very touching testimony and um, the pastors came in great ministry doing great things for God there when they came in they said this that they believe it to be an angel but they said somebody at a point where the ministry really needed the hand of God somebody just entered with one of our teachings and gave them and left never to see him again never knew him he was just somebody who came and dropped it and left and the pastor said when they listened to it they got all the information and as at the time they were talking to me they said they had over 200 of the messages and it has revolutionized the people there are people today who know me and love this ministry I have never seen them in fact 75% of those who get blessed by this ministry we have never set our eyes some of them is just one message is a mystery is a mystery if you think it's ordinary try it just go online and put anything I don't care what just put anything and invite people there is an angel there is an angel of the Lord's presence that signifies the Word of God and sends it like an envoy hallelujah during my during my birthday I think we had compliments from over 16 nations 16 nations of the world that have been blessed by the ministry i've not gone to most of them see that but then it's coming there are people who take these messages by themselves and keep spreading that's their ministry that is like a covenant they signed with god brothers and sisters tonight i want you to give up on your strength outside of god i'm reducing your journey towards destiny you will waste your time for nothing and find out after 70 years that this is not how it works but when the ability of God is upon you, it will make you a sign and a wonder. You will have unusual access. Access to things you will not pay for. The anointing will pay for things for you. Unusual access. Hallelujah. And finally, the third reward for the ability of the Spirit working in you is ever increasing honor honor let me tell you what honor is listen honor is not just recognition honor is the discernment of your uniqueness and the ability to reward it if you are not rewarded for your uniqueness it's not honor you can be recognized but when a man recognizes you and is willing to invest in you that is honor to honor is to esteem you with respect and dignity and that you'll be rewarded for your blessings almost every day of my life there are people blessing me sowing seeds doing all kinds of things I sat down this morning and I was talking to the Lord I said Lord what are you doing to me this is more than I have bargained for. As soon as we arrived this evening, I just came in and when I came out, I was almost, sometimes you see me come and sit down and I just put my head down. I'm fighting tears many times because I remain humbled at the hand of God. The kind of workers that God has given in this ministry, I think they, they are even, it looks like they believe in the ministry more than me. Tomorrow is a leader's retreat and Sunday is the workers' retreat. Committed people with their life like madmen. 
you try to coordinate people like that and you see how easy it is of course they are trained of course there are principles but the force of cohesion is the ability of the spirit there is an anointing tonight listen I want everybody hearing the sound of my voice inside and outside you're going to make up your mind tonight and say Lord I'm tired of this inferiority and complex it may not have been your fault to have come from the background you came from but it can change I love my father he's a great man and I see most of the things that happen in my life with him as ignorance. But there was a time my father spoke to me and said, I was going to become a failure in this life. And his prayer is that I fail alone and not bring other people. About four years ago, my father got down on his knees and asked me to pray for him. The anointing of the spirit will make you a desire of nations. See, Forget about the meager criticisms you will receive. It's nothing compared to the honor. It's one is to one million. It is totally negligible. Believe me. This is what I know. This is what my hands have handled. And I came with this word tonight. The anointing of the spirit is an equalizer. It can cover for everything that went wrong. So you no longer have an excuse no matter what else fails when you are anointed you still remain valuable the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference we are going to pray and tonight I want us to pray because many of us are going to receive there will be a lot of impartations in this place tonight Especially for some of us who just came newly. Don't just come naively. Open up your heart. Let something fall on your life and change you forever. I have found my servant. Please give us Psalm 89. Verse 20. Psalm 89 verse 20. 89 verse 20 help us media it's his ability that's why my secret place listen my secret place remains my greatest asset not ministrations the man of God Apostle Johnson Suleiman said something that blessed me one time listen he said he was in the secret place praying and building and planning and something happened a big man supposedly a politician big man he came and spoke to him and said he wanted to see him and uh, he was with God one hour he didn't come out two hours he didn't come out three hours he didn't come out and the wife was already getting embarrassed that how can you leave a big man like this and they went to knock and one of his daughters went to knock and then he opened the door and she was saying daddy why attend to this man let him go and he looked at her compassionately and he said my daughter see them he said do you know why this man is here he's here because of what i am doing the, he's not here because he likes me he's here because there is an anointing he needs he needs direction he needs a prophetic word if i stop doing what i'm doing he will not come back again let him wait that's why my secret place is the greatest song. you don't find me gallivanting around i'm like a herbalist you don't see me strolling around and then buying orange peeling it and just moving around no because you are gathered here tonight because you love god it is true but you have come to hear a man who you consider to be anointed and the only reason why you will keep coming and listening and the only reason why nations will keep coming is because of this ability the miracle service is by the corner there are sick people HIV, cancer, all kinds of oppressed people. In this place right now, there are families that have traveled kilometers to come. And they are trusting God for a touch. And so, 
the greatest publicity of a believer men of god get this it's the secret place that's the place you receive strength that's the place you receive innovation that is where you receive wisdom he says i have found david my servant and with my holy oil i smeared him with oil that activated an ability let's look at the next three verses 21 with whom my hand shall be established my arm shall also strengthen him the enemy shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him 24 but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted he said thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side listen my prayer is that the least among us here will be as great as david but you know if you take it from the standpoint of intelligence there are people who are a thousand times more intelligent than you your advantage in the kingdom is the backing of the spirit please listen if you keep me side by side with brilliant people i may not have too much to say if you keep me side by side with intellectuals i may have something to say but maybe not much if you keep me around older people they have experience i may only have little to say if you keep me around people the world is full of cynical people even if i want to bless them they will not believe in me either because i'm not their tribe or because of certain parameters so my bailout is the anointing i got the anointing upon my life jealously i can lose everything but not his presence and the anointing that it brings he says but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horns listen god can exalt the horn of a man god spoke to us that this is the season of the rain and the rain is already falling i tell you people's stories are changing god is taking people to newer levels of wealth newer levels of the anointing newer levels of the spirit inside and outside some of you are standing there are no seats standing by the fence listen you are face to face with destiny it's not by might it's not by power but it's by my spirit if you've never believed in the ability of God in you, I want you to believe it. Ephesians 3.20 And then we'll pray. Ephesians chapter 3, please, verse 20. Help us, media. Verse 20. 20. 3.20 Everyone read it together. now unto him who is the him the almighty god who is able to do say god is able to do in me whatever he desires god is able to do in me god is able to do in me years ago when i saw these meetings i i i, I would say i didn't believe them but it was difficult to explain it see let me tell you something there are times a vision can be so great there's no point trying to share it because nobody can understand but only be consistent when you begin to birth wonders then the world will know he's a mighty god and i want you to believe him he can change anyone's story god can make you the song of many like david the song upon the mouth of women and children young and old you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on the other world all sing all fountains of the deep cry out kadosh you are mighty on the earth. Shadows, you are my 
substance of the spirit upon those 15 people I'm about to pray right now and the angels of the Lord will separate those people mightily by the power of the Holy Spirit Father in the name of Jesus lift your hands Lord where are those 15 people right now in the name of Jesus let the fire of God throw them out right now right now right now right now right now by the power of the Holy Ghost Right now, inside and outside. Shkapata, Sheketeteta, Empratos Kalaban. I send the word in the realm of the spirit. Shekebarataba, Reketetekete, Sheketekelebosh. Let there be that activation. Inside and outside, those portals. I open it in the name of Jesus. You can't stand it. No, you can't stand it. It's an ability from heaven. It's an ability from heaven. An ability from heaven. You will never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. Never be the same. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. i 
of favor only the anointing can bring there are levels of increase only the anointing can bring there are levels of grace and glory only the anointing can bring I like you to pray that every door of favor you need to enter may the anointing bring you into it lift your voice and pray the distance between you and a major breakthrough is one door of favor away. No man can stop you. I tell you, when the anointing is upon you, you are invincible. No power can stop you. Walks. You will climb mountains when the anointing is upon you. When men think you are born with, you will rise by an agency that the 
they cannot understand. It's his ability. It's his ability. Hallelujah. 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 Just one last prayer point. I want you to insist. Listen. I want you to insist and say between now and the end of this month, you must have a testimony. Insist. Lift your voice and pray. Don't pray. Pray of cowardice. You are praying the will of God. Shabakata. By the anointing. Let it bring proofs. Supernatural testimonies. In my life. In my finances. In my body. Pray. In my academics. In my marriage. Listen to me. From today, I want you to walk in the consciousness that I'm anointed. It has nothing to do with a man of God. You need the anointing to burn ideas, financial ideas. You need that anointing for creativity. Your mind will not think independent of the anointing. You need that idea. You need that creativity. The anointing will bring direction to your life. It's God's ability. It's not your ability. It's God's ability. Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of your son, Jesus. From today, let no one here be ordinary. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying over you from the depth of my heart. And I prophesy to you that the mountains that have stood before you and the next dimension in your walk with God, may the anointing of God turn them into testimonies. is a possessor the believer is a possessor blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance in the name that is above all names everything that has stopped the grace upon your life from finding expression everything that has stopped the grace of God upon your life from being recognized by those who you were sent to I tear off that fail tonight in the name of Jesus that has blocked the flow of grace from the realm of the spirit to you it leaves heaven but it doesn't get to you every pathway in the spirit by whatever mystery that has been blocked I open it right now in the name of Jesus Christ every spiritual inaccuracy in the name of Jesus Every missing the mark spiritually, every disalignment, everything 
that makes you get it but not complete. You receive things from heaven, but you don't get the full details. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I supply power to your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, some of you have dreams, but you have an incomplete dream. Just when the information you need in the dream is about to come, then you wake up. You know it was of God. It was holding the key to clarity, but something covered it. Right now, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, may there be spiritual accuracy. I speak in spiritual accuracy. I prophesy spiritual accuracy. Everything that has made you timid and fearful and made you think you are nobody and that the anointing cannot find expression in your life. Tonight I curse that spirit. By the God of heaven I curse fear. I curse intimidation. I curse timidity. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I prophesy to you in this season, arise. Arise and shine. It's your season of the rain. Every dryness in your life, it is swallowed up by the rain. The Bible says, until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Isaiah 32, 15. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine. And a fruitful vine will be counted for a forest. Everything that has covered your glory. A man can walk with his glory covered. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the one who is the lifter up of men. By the agency of the, non the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May your glory begin to speak from today. I prophesy may your glory begin to speak from today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now keep standing. There are people here inside and outside. You've never made a serious decision to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Some at one point or the other, you may have come to commit yourself. You've answered an altar call before. But for some reason, things happen around your life and you went haywire. Tonight, God is giving you an opportunity. He's giving you a new beginning. Inside and outside, no matter how far you are, do not miss out. The activities of the Spirit are only for those who are part of the program of God. Those who have experienced the reality of the new birth. Wherever you are, you want to say, Jesus, come into my heart. Or you are rededicating your life. You are saying from today, I stop playing church. I mean business with Jesus. Inside and outside. Especially for those of us who came for the post, you and me. But adventure, you've just been living your life the way you want. But right now, you are saying, I'm making my ways right. Wherever you are, leave your seat and come out here right now. Quickly. I'll just count one to ten. We're out of time. One. Two. Inside and outside. Three. We'll just count one to ten. For time's sake, very quickly. Four. Don't let no devil stop you. He's giving you a new beginning. Five. Six. Please clear the way for them. Seven. God bless you. Keep coming. Eight. Nine. No power will stop you tonight. It's time to make it right for real. God bless you. Keep coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. Motivate them. Motivate them. The devil is a liar. Keep clapping. Motivate them. They are coming from outside. No matter how far you are, please clear the way for them. Keep coming. Don't allow anybody to stop you. Make your way to the front.
hallelujah the power of god is here right where you are in one minute i'd like you to talk to the lord you are not reciting a poem from the depth of your heart jesus i have come for real no playing games go ahead and pray those of you in front here jesus i have come to you go ahead and pray jesus i come to you jesus i come to you no playing games no one leg in one leg out jesus i come to you those of us standing stretch your hands towards them don't just watch them pray for them from the depth of your heart pray as if you are praying for your son or your daughter or your mother or father Make sure you are talking to the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to lead you to pray this prayer. There is a strong anointing for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Many of you as you are praying this prayer, you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. The power of God will just come upon you. There is such a strong anointing for baptism in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now those of you in front, say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you are the son of God I repent of my sins and I declare that I need you in my life from today I receive eternal life say it I receive eternal life into my spirit forward ever backward never I break away from every wrong association and I receive grace to live the victorious life in the name of Jesus Christ now let me pray for you father I pray for these ones I stretch my hands may the power of God come upon them in the name of Jesus Christ I'm speaking to you I lay my hands prophetically upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus that every weight every encumbrance that keeps you down the power of sin over your life is broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And a fresh supply of grace from today, such a hunger for God will come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, a hunger for prayer, a hunger for the study of the word, a hunger for fellowship in the house of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, thank you for making this glorious decision. This is the best decision in your life. Hold on. I want you to follow the gentleman. There are some people waving their hands. All of you just walk this way. They will lead you. They will have your details and speak to you. And um, we'll follow you up. We'll send an SMS to you to follow up. Celebrate them. Koinonia, God bless you. Appreciate them, please. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete koto, kete branda kata bako tosko tobre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.